Dad! Dad? Car, Jenny. him Thanks for getting back to me so quickly. It's about an old client, a friend from Big Sur, Ed Miller. He claims it's his fault that his daughter and her mother are dead. He was driving when their car went off a cliff, and he tried to kill himself. He's been in the hospital for a week. He can't get out of bed because of uh, vertigo, I think. Oh, and he was dehydrated. Probably because of, uh, alcohol. Robert? If you could, I would take care of everything. Travel expenses, hotels, fees. Robert? Whatever you need. I think I remember this Ed Miller. The writer? The one it all started with?
Clara Miller. I'm Dr. Lomas. Robert Kerrigan asked, Doctor, you have no idea how grateful I am to you for bringing Ed home. It's the least I could do. It's a long drive from L.A. When will you get here? If all goes well, early tomorrow morning. I want to get started with that immediately. I'll be waiting for you. A pleasure meeting you, Ed. I'm Dr. Lomas. Doctor in what exactly? Doctor? Bachelor's in Psychology from UC Berkeley. Master's in... <clears throat> Systemic and family psychotherapy from the University Why, of Michigan. Why, Robert? And... Why? <laughs> doctorate in clinical psychology from Stanford. <laughs> Why? Hmm. I'll give you free reign. Over my memories, my trauma, my room, my troubles. You got one hour. One. Sorry to insist, Dr. Leonard, but the patient's dizziness, nausea, anxiety are triggered by what exactly? Anything, even just taking a few steps. No books, no remote, no tablet, no phone. How does he spend his time? The patient shows no signs of injury to the inner ear. This rules out any physiological cause. This could be a case of acrophobia with neurological origins in the recent traumatic episode, as you suggested. What about his daughter and that woman? Do we know anything? On paper, Mr. Miller has no children. As for that woman, named Faye, there's nothing. However, with regards to your request to treat him outside of the hospital, He's my patient, Doctor. He's lost. He knows that he'll never recover on his own, but that doesn't keep him from feeling threatened by me. Or is that just his way of asking for help? Few factors can shatter self-esteem like a lack of full autonomy regarding one's excretory system. No wonder Ed is in this state. The clock is ticking, Doctor. About that. Straight to my troubles, huh? With all of those degrees, I'd have expected a little more... psychology? Nobody's wiping my ass, if that's what you mean. I'll take nauseated over nauseous any day. When was the last time he wore them? If I had this kind of vertigo and no other choice but to walk, 
I'd prefer the cold floor too. Those slippers are a little far from the bed, aren't they? Very subtle, Doctor. Should we get started? Tick tock, Doctor. Why do you think Robert Kerrigan asked me to see you? Because he's loaded, feels guilty, is simply bored. I thought you were friends. What difference does that make? How do you feel right now? Pretty fucking shitty. Like when some idiot comes and pours salt on your wound, hmm? If you're only going to give me an hour, it could at least be a fruitful one. Shitty. Why? Why? Because I lost a daughter? Because I killed two people? Because everyone treats me like I'm crazy? Because I pee in a bottle from a Dali painting? Because everything is surreal? Because... Because of you. Does shitty work or do you want me to keep going? Keep going. Okay. I'll keep going. Shitty, 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 and shitty. Got that? You say it's your fault that your daughter and her mother died? And you don't want to believe me. <laughs> of course. There aren't any birth records connecting you to a daughter. <sighs> I hadn't acknowledged paternity yet. Everything happened so fast. Convince me that this woman, Faye, exists. What do you want to know? What do you want to tell me? It was about... a year ago. <sighs> I just sat down to work. I'd had writer's block for years. But I remembered something I'd made up in an interview. And here today to talk about how to revive your creativity is Ed Miller, author of Face to the Ground, our book recommendation of the month. Ed, can I call you Ed? Welcome and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Though I wasn't too sure you took bribes. Pretty good caviar, right? <laughs> Just to be clear, you're joking here. Remember, you're on public radio. <laughs> Even better, no one's listening. <laughs> all right, all right. So, Ed, have you ever experienced blank page syndrome? <laughs> Constantly. And uh, how do you deal with it? I do a kind of... I don't know. Warm up? If the mind doesn't want to start, then we have to ask the body to. So I let my eyes search for a starting point. When my eyes find the word, then it's my fingers turn. I let them write whatever they want after that word. The trick is not to think. Let them be free.
Really? I got your number. The thing is, I'd like to see you again. Oh, I think I lost an earring. If you do I hear hi? Remember, it's original owners. No doubt it was put to good use considering their history of depression. Thirty-five thousand from the bearded gentleman. Do I hear 40? 40? 35,000 going once. 35,000 going twice. I'm coming, Samuel! Please! Open the door! Hi. Uh... Hi? It hurts. Ugh. It hurts me just looking at it. Were you trying to get me to faint? Uh, no. I tripped, and... Can you help me? My battery's dead, and there are no other houses nearby. Ugh. I'm no doctor, but that looks really bad. I'm... Kind of in the middle of something, but let me call you an ambulance. No, don't. I'm between jobs, no insurance, no money. I need to lie down, please. Okay. Well, come in. Let's take a look at it. If you bleed to death, you mop it up. Can I lean on you? Um, maybe you should ask before you actually lean on the person. Ow, oh, oh, uh, hold on. Slower. <laughs> hold on, um, not so fast. Don't take this the wrong way, but this would be faster if I carried you. Uh, I can walk. Just don't go so fast. Uh, ow! Uh, fine. Carry me. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna grab you here, okay? And here. And lift you up. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Can I lean on you? All That's right, okay with here me. we go. All right. Hey, am I that heavy? If you had taken your backpack off... Okay, I'm going to let you go. Hold on, hold on. 
Let me take my backpack off. Now? You want my back to hurt too? Mine already does. <laughs> All right. May I? You may. Do I? Please do. All right. Oh. Phew. Finally. Thank you. Are you good? Comfortable? Hmm? As comfortable as I can be, I guess. Thanks. Um, what did you say your name was? I didn't say what my name was. Oh. Thanks, Mr. Mysterious. I'm Faye. If you could bring me some ice. <laughs> Mm. Hand me your phone and I'll charge it for you. It's no problem at all. I left my car outside the Force Park entrance. I'll go over there and let you be once the swelling goes down. <sighs> all right? Ed, sweetie, did you get the little blanket I made for Petronius? Aunt Claire? What blanket? A cat blanket's a thing? Oh, it should have gotten there by now. Hold on, I got a package the other day. Let me check. What? You don't cook either, pet. Bring me some ice. Yeah, I can. Wait, wait. Gently. You're not even going to thank me? Sure, as soon as I wake up. Thank you. 
Get off of there. Come on. Move it. Move it. You've read the message. You're obviously not going to answer me, right? My friends warned me about you. Fine. Screw the earring. Ugh, it still needs a good while. Mr. Mysterious, you there? I'm coming right down. No, no, I, I was just wondering if you had left. Hey, the ice worked. My ankle looks brand spanking new. Yeah, you heal quickly. Always have. By the way, thanks for the blanket. Thank Pet. It's his blanket. The cat? Bold move. I'd definitely go with a cold girl over a pissed cat. <sighs> Besides, I usually warm up fast. <sighs> Have you eaten? I'm hungry. I can order something online. Something? My favorite. It's the local specialty. I ordered it yesterday. And the day before. There might even be leftovers in the fridge. Something left over? Even better! I'll check the fridge. Don't order anything, okay?
Someone looks pleased. Am I interrupting a special moment? Huh? Porn? Something left over? Porn. It's something... I'm writing. Mr. Mysterious finally makes a reveal. What do you write? Hopefully not mysteries. That would be too predictable. Well, right now, it's a mystery. Even to me. I'm not too sure where this is headed. Well, here you go, in case you get thirsty along the way. Consider it my way of saying thank you. Mm. A toast? Hmm. May I ask where you carried this from? Your kitchen. I was looking for something left over in the cabinets and... Huh. I thought you knew about wine. Are you doubting me? I'm offended. Convince me. Hmm. Full-bodied with a deep ruby hue. Hints of red currant. Hmm. Floral notes. Sweet tannins, thoroughly integrated acidity, persistent aftertaste. Hmm. Red? I'm sold. A toast to you. Anything else you want to know? Ask. You have until I finish my glass. The riskier the question, the bigger the sip. What are you doing in Cerro Lake? Guess. I'm looking for someone. Who? I'm not sure yet, to be honest. Hmm. Short sip. I'm not about to ask you the classic uh, work or study question. But, uh, do you work or study? Neither. I just finished my degree. In? Psychology. Ugh. Hmm. Short sip. All right, you've got one more. Make it count. You sleeping at a motel? Do you want me to find myself one? That's not what I said. Words. Now I get why you're so well-spoken. Wolf, Bierce, Plath, Poe, a host of tragic deaths. Should I be scared? My favorite one's missing. The son of the Black Corsair. Emilio Salgari, right? Mm-hmm. How did he die? Uh, suicide. I should be scared. 
Hey, look! One who's alive. I'm saved. Do you like Ed Miller? You're speaking to him right now. Ed Miller. Pleasure. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know what? Me and that guy have history. Huh. So, what kind of history? The bad kind. Oh. Hmm. Wait, say no more. He stole your wine. <laughs> I wouldn't have let him. I was about 13? I was obsessed with this book. Well, the cheapo edition. I heard he was doing a book signing at Rossmore Books. I pretended I was sick to skip school, but my parents didn't buy it. I tried to leave during recess and got caught. After school, I ran so fast that one of my heels broke and I twisted my ankle. But I made it. I got in line and waited and waited. And when there were only three people left in front of me, this old guy showed up, his editor, I think. White hair, white suit. You still here? What about the radio interview? And he took him away. The end. I never even saw his face. Getting grounded felt worse than the ankle, but not nearly as bad as the letdown. Anywho, 13 years old. The cheapo edition you had didn't have a picture of Miller, did it? I'd remember. This edition does. Don't you want to see his face? Yes! No! No? Of course! You even told me! I thought you were joking! I, I have to see this with my own... Oh! Petronius, what did I tell you, huh? Sorry, your, your uncle... It, it's fine, it's fine. I think he doesn't like me, is all. He doesn't like any girl. He's quite... Possessive. Oh, so do you get a lot of lady callers? Nobody comes here, except for my neighbor, Samuel Franklin. Oh, should I lock the door and turn off the lights? Or would you rather I get another glass? Anyway, uh, I'm 23 now. I'll never learn. Do you remember the song that Buster sings at the end of the book? I wrote it. Did you write the music? It's a novel. You can't hear it. I could. What? What? No. <gasps> no. Sing it. No way. Sing it. No, no. Please. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. Hey, you know you owe me after those leftovers. The bitch in me hates all that I am. The bitch in you hates all that you are. But when we are together, Hate each other twice 
this much That's the reason why we will never part Which goes to show is how itchy we are And ever meant to cause you any harm Cause darling, you need no help with that But it's so fucking funny To see how you destroy your life Or in your case To see how I wreck mine What a waste it'd be if we didn't team up Which goes to show just how bitchy we are And then, um, I don't think I need to go into detail about what happened. I think I've got the picture. Um, <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. But there's something I do want to know. Do you remember the date? I don't even know today's date. Our brain gathers much more information than we think. Look here. No, no, no. You want to hypnotize me? Please. <laughs> I thought Robert would hire a real professional. You can keep your eyes on me, but a little spiral is too much for you? <laughs> so let's go back to that day. You wrote a novel a while back, but you've been suffering writer's block for years. You look through your office window, leaves dance in the wind, birds sing up in the sky. There's a mug in your hands, a warm feeling a comforting scent. You look at a tree and suddenly an idea. Your cat interrupts you begging for food and when you go feed it, There's someone at the door. I'm coming, Samuel! Please, open the door! Uh, hi? It hurts. If you could bring me some ice. <laughs> Hand me your phone and I'll charge it for you. It's no problem at all. I left my car outside the Force Park entrance. 
I'll go over there and let you be once the swelling goes down. <sighs> All right? You mentioned a certain Samuel. He lives a five-minute drive away, across the forest with his wife. The one who bakes apple pies? Do you like to drink? Wine. Never on my own. Why? People like me better that way. You call your cat, Pat. It's short for Petronius. He'll go missing. How did she do it? I haven't asked her yet. Consider it my way of saying thank you. Hmm. A toast? I just finished my degree. In? Psychology. Ugh. Why are you so put off by psychology? If it weren't for my aunt, I'd be dead right now. Explain. You bought it at an auction, right? 
Who had it belonged to? The first American flapper, as F. Scott put it. Zelda Fitzgerald? And her husband? I'm sure you know they both ended up in psychiatric treatment. He was an alcoholic. He had died of tuberculosis. She had schizophrenia and died in a fire at the insane asylum. Got it. Thank you. Is your cell on, Ed? Yes. What's the date on the screen? October 8th. You'd had writer's block for years. How did it feel to write again? Hopeful, scary. Will you keep the idea going? We'll see. All good? <laughs> As I was saying, you have no idea how sorry I am that this didn't work out. Mm -hmm. I had to give it a try. So you did it. Cured. <laughs> I'm not going to cure you. You are. We'll continue this later. Get some rest? smile of the nurse that tore you from your mother's arms. Your first lover, sleepless in an unknown house, in an unknown bed, staring at an unknown body. Spiders lining up to dive into your empty mouth. All of your TV sets aching to be turned on again. A roach scratching its belly with the bristles of your toothbrush. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good tickle? And then, you hear? <gasps> Doctor! How long have you been here? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Who's the poem by? Oh gosh. I like to come up with verses while I work. Oh, so then this is where Ed gets it from. Or from my brother, his father. It runs in the family. Where is his father? Hmm. Where did I put the sauce? Oh, it's right over there. I'll get it. Oh, don't be silly. Eddie loves three bean chili. He used to ask me to make it all the time when he was little. What about his parents? Care to eat lunch with me? I usually eat with Ed upstairs, but it's no big deal if he eats alone for once. Besides, 
I made enough chili to feed an army. I appreciate it, but I think it would be better for Ed if you ate together. I think I might need a little fresh air to take a break and maybe uh, organize some of my notes. You should check out the dock. Plenty of sun at this time of day. I'll make you a sandwich. What do you think about Ed? He's a little stubborn, isn't he? Will he walk soon? It's still too soon to venture a hypothesis. Well, I guess he should just focus on doing his exercises, right? What exercises? Ham, cheese, lettuce, tomato, and mayonnaise? Yes, but can we hold the ham, cheese, and mayonnaise? Well, if I was able to help him last time, I'm sure a doctor like you will manage. Help him with what exactly? Vertigo. Vertigo? Oh, let me tell you, Eddie was never afraid of heights as a child. No pirate captain ever is. You see that tree? The one with the deck chair? There used to be a little tree house in it. Ed would spend hours on end up there. My brother built it for him. Then Eddie turned it into his very own pirate ship. It was all he could talk about. Pirate this, pirate that. He was obsessed with pirates ever since I got him a book by Salgari. And with his love of pirates came a love of reading, too. And see, that's where the writing began. Mystery solved. I don't mean to pry, but... When did he have for... Off you go then, Doctor. Or you might not have time to eat your sandwich. Ed is reluctant and even hostile towards therapy. Why? He's blocking out a certain memory, one he doesn't want to remember, something too painful. Hmm, 
I've never seen such an intense case of vertigo before. He's not the first writer I've known to exaggerate his symptoms, to get attention, make people feel sorry for him, make it more realistic in his mind, which is so used to fiction. Does she exist? I wouldn't be surprised if Faye was a character Ed's working on for some book, whether she exists or not. She may hold the key to all of this, or at least one of the keys. What about that earlier Vertigo episode? And his parents? Something happened in his childhood. But Claire isn't going to tell me. Maybe Robert? Or Ed himself, if I can break through this wall he's put up. I'll have to give it a try. The number you are trying to reach is currently unavailable. Who am I speaking to? Dr. Lomas? Who is this? Uh, it's Sheriff Reyes. Dr. Leonard gave me your number. How are you, Sheriff? Um, look, I don't want you to breach patient doctor confidentiality or anything, but... I mean, something comes up in your conversations with Miller. Is Ed under investigation? Is he the suspect of a crime? No, not exactly. If I understood correctly, Ed hasn't committed any crime. Well, we'll have to see about that. So, will you give me a hand? I'll try. I'll do what I can. I understand. Thank you, Doctor. I would settle for anything at all. Maybe someone saw something. I'm on my way to his neighbors as we speak. The Franklin? Nick. You there? Sorry, I've got to go. What is it this time, Adam? Tell me you saw my email with the slogan proposals. Yeah, great stuff, kid. I'm not sure which one I like the best. I like the sixth one. Um, yeah. That one was, uh... Vote for Sheriff Reyes, the sneaky bastard who would have known there were only three slogans if he'd read the... Adam, do I have to tell your aunt and uncle you have no respect for your elders? You at the ranch yet? I'm on my way. Look, if anyone asks, I was working on Saturday night, okay? I skipped the monthly dinner. Hello, Samuel. Did you know your nephew was a sneaky bastard? <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Hey, I'll check that out once I got a signal again, okay?
Samuel! Are you there? It's me! Sheriff Reyes! How long have you been here like this? Gusto es mío. your strength back. Adam, care to tell me why my assistant graduated with blue hair? Ah, no. I told my Aunt Esther to get rid of that picture. I made a bet with Marcelo. If I graduated before he finished his thesis, I had to do it. Where'd you find it? I'll tell you later.
Adam. Hold on, Nick. Sorry, I'm back. Everything okay? The big tree. In the field behind the barn. Who's under it? Oh. My cousin Leonard. I never met him. What was it? Fifty years ago? He was stillborn. My aunt almost died. They had to remove her uterus or ovaries or something. Nick? You still there? <clears throat> Sounds terrible. Thanks, ma'am. I'll uh, see you at the station. I don't think your uncle's taking very good care of him. Seriously? The old man is really losing it. You'll be here on time, right? Uh, you better fill in for me, all right? Again? Sneaky bastard.
Madam, were you planning on fishing with your uncle anytime soon? No. Why? He hasn't invited me since I told him about Marcelo. No reason. Just curious. It's probably for the best, to be honest. At least they didn't rob you.
Busy. I'll let you know later. I was just going to call you. Ed's waiting. Honey, don't say anything to Adam. Call forensics and tell them that. Ed? Mm. Shall we start?
Why don't you tell me about your childhood? What do you want to know? What you played? How high up? The treehouse is beautiful. It was. Right, you scallywags. Now we've got to heave ho. Hmm. Flanagan, me hook. It's not in your cabin, Captain Roberts. Blame me, Flanagan. I can't board that ship without me hook. I think it's back on School Island, Captain. You better bring it to me soon, unless you want to end up a shark. Ed, bait. Bud, come to my office, please. Okay, Dad. Flanagan, get all hands on deck. Oi, Captain. Governor Miller cries me presence at the forecastle to discuss highly important matters. If I keep piling up treasures, relics, and talismans, I'll have to start sleeping on deck. Arr, I've got enough Spanish dollars to buy me own island. one-of-a-kind article crafted by Richard Longfinger Evans, the best hatter on Skull Island. Wait a second, was me hook in me pack when I visited the hat shop? I tore it from Admiral Lawrence Mitz after sinking his gracious majesty's ship. Skull Island market looks quiet this time of just what I thought. There's that horn swaggler Longfinger Evans. me hearty Flanagan. <clears throat> We're approaching the jeer at the end of the world. Flanagan, take the helm, or must I take care of everything?
Now is a good time to wet me whistle. I'm as thirsty as... Ed, are you there? You coming up? Yes, Dad. Dad? Buddy! You knocked so softly that I barely even heard you. Come and say hi the way we do. Remember the Pirate Brotherhood secret handshake? There is no lost cause. As long as there's one remaining madman who fights for it, the Pirate Brotherhood will be victorious. We're getting better at this. Open the window for me, will you? Secret handshakes are like everything else. The more you practice, the better you get. Hmm. Anyway, do you have something you want to tell me? I was busy playing, but I came as fast as I could. You sure did. I think you even broke some kind of record. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. How's your morning? More productive than mine, I hope. Yeah, but it got really thirsty and wanted to drink a huge glass of Juicy Blue. But then I came here and didn't drink a thing. Now I'm so thirsty, I'm dying. <laughs> You're going to die of thirst, and I'm going to die before finishing this never-ending chapter. I'll tell you what. As soon as you're out that door, you drink your juice first thing, okay? Okay. By the way, do you... When you finish the novel, can we go on a trip? Yes, start thinking about where you want to go. And now, what would you say if... Is Mom back from the store? Mm-mm. What do you say you go to the garage and bring me a... You know what. I don't think I know what you know what is. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't act like you don't. Oh, and the most important thing is that nobody can ever know. Nobody, nobody? Nobody, nobody. It's our secret. A secret pirate brotherhood exactly. pact? Exactly. A secret pirate brotherhood pact. Signed in blood. Signed in... Ink. Wait. Ink? You'll see. Ink. Okay, so what could the symbol of the Pirate Brotherhood be? My hook. Excellent choice. Let's do it. <laughs> it's awesome. Secret pact? Secret pact. <laughs> All right then. Hurry up, you know your mission.
This is where it all started, before I played a kid's game, spies and stuff. Well, better late than never. Aunt Claire made me promise to call her if I ever found a real treasure. She says I pester her with calls, but she cracks up, so... Dad doesn't like constantly moving from one house to the other. But when his book gets published, he'll leave his job in San Francisco and will stay here for good. Mom is always getting on my case for leaving my stuff lying around, but lately she leaves her stuff around too. Being a grown up is cool because you can drive motorcycles. But it's also not cool because you spend half the day shaving and things like that. When I grow up, I only want to be a grown-up for the things I like. Juicy, blue, juicy blue. Juicy, blue, juicy blue. Oh man, there's no more. Though, Juicy Blue is better ice cold, right? Juicy blue, please, please. Man, there's no more here either. Now, what do I drink? Maybe now I should do what Dad asked me to.
Oh, I miss them. And I'm sure Mom misses them too. This winter we ran out of firewood and brought the heater inside. It was fun. Well, not really. Captain, the thing we are looking for, I'm not clear on part of it. Explain yourself, Flanagan. Could you describe it to me? Well, I don't know. A little like this? Ooh, of course, Captain, but... Why exactly is it a secret mission? The reason, Flanagan, is also a secret. Oh, it's so much clearer to me now, but... What exactly are we looking for? We're looking for a rhino what, Flanagan? Oh, no, I understand, though. I know it's here in the garage, but where exactly? That is the question, Flanagan. The governor is constantly changing its location. Oh, I totally see why. Enough questions, Flanagan. Start looking. It was an accident. <clears throat> well, it's not here. Dang it, not here either.
secret must be kept. You're not fooling me, little bird. <gasps> Mom! Eddie? What? What are you doing? You know I don't like you playing in here. It's dangerous. Eddie? I was looking for the hook Dad gave me because... The hook? Yeah, the hook. Okay, whatever. I don't want to know. Do as you please. Mom. Well, just finish what you're doing and come to the kitchen when you're done and help me with the groceries, okay? Captain Roberts, in a desperate attempt to keep his word for the governor, had made enemies of Captain Morgan. A valuable ally, I must get her back, he said to himself. But first, I have a mission to complete, and Morgan can't find out. Ed, dude, are you crazy? Why did you climb up if you've already fallen once? Are you okay? I just wanted to keep our secrets safe. Buddy, it's not that. It, it's just that it's dangerous. You have to be careful. I was very careful, Dad. Ed, you could have... Wait. Did I hear the car? Is she back? Did she... Uh... Hey, did you talk to her? And... Did you tell her... Does she know? I didn't say a word. The Pirate Brotherhood is safe. Good. That's good. Um... Maybe you should oh, go yeah. see Oh, yeah! I was supposed to help her with the groceries. Come to think of it, I've never seen you climb. Will you show me how you climb down? Maybe I can use it for my novel.
Hey, are you hungry? <clears throat> My belly is full of water. I was so thirsty I drank a glass of water this big in one gulp. That's my boy. What are we gonna eat? Well, unless your dad cooked something and hid it so he could surprise us later. Roasted veggies. Ugh, gross. You don't say. I could tell by that face. <clears throat> okay. Can you put the rest of this stuff away while I start getting things ready? <sighs> okay. All right, let's see if you remember where everything goes. Mom, I put everything away. Can I go play now? I'd say that was faster than ever. <clears throat> Wait. Are you sure there's nothing left in the bag? If I were you, I'd check again. signs point to a bottle of juicy red my fave <laughs> thanks mom The red one's good, too. But you don't really. It's not your fault. Oh. Mom! You're bleeding! That's why you were crying! Oh, sorry, I got some on your drawing. Hmm, <clears throat> signed in blood. Should I go tell- It's nothing, sweetie. 
I'll fix it up in a jiffy. Just finish putting the things away, please, buddy, okay? So brave. I should give this to mom. I wonder which bathroom she went to. Mom? So? What? What happened next? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah, nothing. Ed, there are some things I still don't quite understand. What happened to your mother? Why was she crying? She cut herself. When was the last time you cried because of a little cut? Maybe it wasn't a small cut. I don't remember much. Would you say you were a little obsessed with pirates? Not as much as you are with psychoanalyzing me. I was just a kid. Do you tend to obsess over things? Maybe you're the one who's obsessed? Asking the same question over and over again. It's common for kids to have an imaginary friend. But you had a whole world. Captain Roberts, Flanagan, the Hatter, the Hundred Sucker Kraken. Thousand the... Sucker. I guess it's a writer's thing. <laughs> yes, don't get me wrong. I don't see any problem with the world itself, just with certain details. Okay. Why didn't your father want your mother to find out about the Frangles? You've misunderstood. My father always hid treasures around the house for me. Little presents or just some candy. It was a game. I see. One last... I was under the distinct impression that psychologists just listened. Let's just say we'd rather ask questions than listen to half-truths. <laughs> Why would I lie to you? Ah, oh, come on. Don't you ever get tired of being ridiculous? It's not going to work this time either. Please. Earlier, I sat down at the edge of the pond. There's something about it that... I don't know. Lingers? It's as if I were there right now. The water moved slowly. I liked the sound. The air was humid, sweet. The cool breeze whistled between my fingers.
You could barely hear the birds in the distance. It smelled like sap, like bark, like earth. I imagined myself eight years old, sitting, smelling, feeling, seeing. And I imagine you, eight years old, I see you. You've climbed up into the treehouse. You're playing. What are you playing? Ready to board. Flanagan, me hook. It's not in your cabin, Captain Roberts. You better bring it to me soon, unless you want to end up a shark. Damn it, Eddie. Are you deaf? Come to my office, now. Okay, Dad. Flanagan, get all hands on deck. Oi, Captain. Governor Miller cries me presence at the forecastle to discuss highly important matters. Where did you get all of this? They're treasures. They're all over the place. They're not actually treasures. But I make it look like it. The trick is half closing your eyes. Why the name? It's from a movie. The dreaded Captain Roberts. Mm-hmm. Do you like being scary? Only when I'm a pirate. Why is Flanagan so ugly and hunchbacked? Maybe because he's a little dumb? Mm-hmm. Are ugly people dumb? He's kind of like a monster, but cute and fun. Who gave you all of that? My dad bought me a ton of pirate toys. Look closely. Are you sure that toy was bought in a store? Maybe... I found it somewhere. Like my treasures. Before... He would give me presents. Lots. Why did he stop? He's busy. Who built it? Dad. Are you sure? Yep. Why did he yell at you like that? Sometimes he gets a little upset. What makes him upset? The yearning.
Dad? What? Jeez. What have I told you about coming in here while I'm working? I made you lose focus and artists what do you need say? to concentrate. You go to the garage and bring me a... You know what. I don't think I know what you know what is. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't act like you don't. Oh, and most importantly, your mom can't find out. A secret pirate brotherhood pact? Sure, but she can't find out. Come on! You're taking forever. You told me about a pirate handshake where you bumped fists. Did that actually happen, or did you make it up? It might have happened another day, before, when everything was peachy. Ed, your father, has he ever hit you? Once. What happened? I just wanted to play Minesweeper on his computer, but it turned off. Then Dad came, and he got angry, and turned it on, and couldn't find something, so he got angry. He turned mean, and he looked at me like I was a bad kid. And your mom, has he ever hit her? I don't know. How much does your dad smoke? I don't know, but he doesn't want to. Who makes him? The yearning. Mm-hmm. Is that what he says? What is your dad writing? A bestseller. Will it? Sell, I mean. He'll never finish it. So your father hides treasure around the house as a kind of game for you. Do you remember other treasures, aside from the Frangles? Not right now. So you and your dad made up the Pirate Brotherhood? Or was there anyone else? No, just me. And your dad? I don't know. No, it's here in the garage, but where exactly? That is the question, Flanagan. The governor is constantly changing its location. Ooh, of course, Captain, but... Enough questions, Flanagan. Start looking.
They look pretty dangerous for a kid. Mom doesn't let me go in there. But your dad asked you to go in. Your dad said he would fix it. I'll never ride my bike again. Ed, are you okay? Ed, what are you feeling? I, I feel... Uh, I feel... Uh, I feel... Okay, okay, it's all right. Are you out of your mind? Sit down there. Read this. The next step in the long process of Joe human self-destruction involved in internal rebellion. His nervous system out of revenge for being mistreated by Joe. <sighs> it's all a bunch of crap, Ed. Uh, I'll never make it. I'm worthless. You understand? Fucking worthless. I'm worthless. You're worthless. A waste. No. No matter. No matter how how hard you try, okay? You're trapped. Remember that. One day it'll come. It'll never go away. Understand? Remember. Dad... I have to... Mom is in the kitchen.
You fell, right? How long ago? Eddie! I got really hurt, and Mom got really scared. Dad, too. It was epic. So after falling from the ivy, you didn't get vertigo? What is that? Fear of heights. For Captain Roberts, fear is what's found on the faces of his enemies. Is it a normal thing for your dad to get really sad all of a sudden? Or angry? Or happy? It wasn't before. Ed, do you drink? So much. Today I drank a huge glass of water in one gulp. That's good. It's important to drink water. Do you like basketball? Ed, 
I'm sorry. Who, who are you talking to? To you. I love it. I don't follow it much, to be honest. Well, I'm sure you'd love it. Really? Why is that? Well, because it's awesome. Oh, sure. So are you. Let's see if you can guess my favorite. Definitely Magic Johnson. Yeah, right. Too obvious. Has to be from this season. Nick Van Exel is my favorite. Nick the Quick. It's not Magic Johnson, of course. But looking at this season, it's a shame. Really a shame. sure there's nothing left in the bag? If I were you, I'd check again. All signs point to a bottle of... It's not your fault. Oh, Mom! You're bleeding! That's why you were crying! I'm oh, sorry, I got some on your drawing. Does it hurt? Don't come in! Uh, ow! Ow! Ed, ow! Eddie! All right. So, you believe me yet, or are you going to keep at it? I had to give it a try. Say hello to Joe Human in your sleep for me. Joe who? told me about it. Don't you remember?
Mrs. Lomas, is there anything I can get you? Um, you don't do dinners by any chance, do you? No, but there is a wonderful restaurant in Santa Anita, about five miles from here. Oh, thank you. I think I'll order in. It's been a long day. Oh, good luck with that. They don't usually deliver here. I could make you something, if you'd like. Just this one time, I can add it to your bill. Would you like anything in particular? Anything you have is fine. If we can do without animal products... Hmm, just give me a few minutes and I'll bring you something, okay? It's just what I thought. Ed is unconsciously repressing some of his memories or distorting them. But did he block things out himself or with the help of someone else? Yes, judging from what he's told me, there's reason to believe he did it himself. What if Ed, aside from fulfilling his father's dream of becoming a writer, followed in his footsteps in other ways? What if, by driving himself off a bridge, Ed was trying to copy his father? No. John wasn't suicidal. Something tells me he abandoned Ed and Maddie. What about his mother? How does one deal with a situation like that? As far as I know, Ed doesn't have any siblings. I wouldn't be surprised if Maddie had decided not to have the child. Too many questions. I hope Robert has some answers. Hey, sweetie. You must be exhausted. Did you find a motel? You should have let me do it for you. You would have picked something way too fancy. Right. No. Yeah. Of course. You just deserve much more. So, tell me, how is Ed? You know I can't. But I'm paying for it. That's not going to work. No, no, yeah, of course. Uh, I know, I know. But he'll be all right, right? It's still too soon to tell, but it's not going to be easy. Hey, dish the dirt. So... What do you think of his Aunt Claire? Have you known her for long? Just over the phone these last few days, but, uh, hey, don't change the subject. I don't know. I think she's hiding something. Uh, yeah, I totally get it. Well, I have some bad news. She doesn't want me to continue with Ed's treatment? She called me a little while ago. On the one hand, she says you're very professional, and she likes how punctual and responsible you are. Oh, and the bad news? She's thinking about moving things out of Ed's room so you can bring in the equipment. Does she think I'm going to use brain scanners? <laughs> No, I don't think so. No, physical therapy equipment. Walkers and stuff. I don't think she realizes you're a psychiatrist or a psychologist. What is it? I always forget. Both. Really? Well, the lady has a whole different picture. Um, I still don't understand why that's a bad thing. Hold on. Ed hates psychiatrists. I'm sure Claire does, too. No, no, uh, yeah, for sure. 
When they find out. Ed already knows and seems okay with it. As for her, time will tell. Give me a second. I need to think. Yeah, sure. Take your time, sweetie. I'm in no hurry. Although I did order some dinner and it should be here any minute now. Tell me about Ed's parents. Well, don't know much. His mother died in a car accident. What? And his baby sister. So she had it. And his father killed himself. Oh, I wouldn't have thought. How? He jumped from a bridge. And you didn't think to tell me this before? Well, I, uh... No, it just slipped my mind. Ed is following in his father's footsteps, and I'm sure his first episode of Vertigo came as a result of that trauma. Yeah, rings a bell. Robert. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. How did you meet Ed? Through a mutual friend, one of his college professors. She gave me his manuscript, I loved it, and we met up. The novel was a diamond in the rough, but it needed a lot of editing. Lucky for him, he was talking to the best editor in Los Angeles. It was a few months worth of work. He would come over, we'd read, talk, drink. You and Ed, were you pretty close? Yeah. Kind of. He became a good friend of mine until Vera... Robert? Yeah, uh, no. Sorry. Are you all right? Yeah. No, um, uh, I don't know. Yesterday, no. Um, the day before yesterday was the anniversary of Veronica's death. I completely forgot about it. It's been eight years, and that's never happened to me before. Do you want to talk about it? No. Yeah. It's fine. It's just weird. It's like I'm... I remember... You said this would happen, didn't you? In our last session. Possibly. Oh, dinner's here. I'll be right back. Ah, take out. A bachelor's best friend. Hey, how's Lou? I need time. Oh my, a visit this late, doctor? Oh, come on. I eat too. Yeah, right. Of course. I'll leave you to it, sweetie. Bon appétit. Talk soon, yeah? Bon appétit. <sighs> Mrs. Lomas, your dinner's gonna get cold. <sighs> All right, kid. Let's go. Never, ever tell me anything like that over walkie-talkie. Not ever again. Adam? You're right. But I was shaken up. I didn't know whether to believe it. I didn't even know what I was doing. I've never needed a hug so badly. But you don't know what I'm talking about, do you?
kid. We have to find my aunt. We'll find your aunt. She's alive, right? I hope so. Harley is getting ready for the biggest search party you've ever seen, Adam. We've already got over a hundred volunteers coming. We'll find her. All right? Let's go. Sure you don't want me to go down there? I've done this before. Just pay attention. Give me more or less slack when I tell you to, okay? You think there's a connection, don't you? Between my uncle and Ed Miller. According to the forensics, your uncle died... ...was murdered. ...a little over a week ago. Nine days ago today, Miller tried to kill himself. We are talking pretty much the same day that Miller's car went over that cliff. And then Jackass says... He was riding with a girl and a baby that no one's ever heard of. But firemen went down and didn't find anything. We don't put out fires, and they don't find... things. All right. Go for it. I'm on the ground. I'm on clipping, all right? Roger that, boss. <sighs> I skipped the monthly dinner, Nick. Hmm? No reason. I... just didn't feel like it. I don't know why. Just didn't. You know. I just stayed home. Watched some stupid show with Marcello. Maybe if I had gone... Whoever did this to your uncle, they did it days before that dinner. But at least I would have been the one to find him. You'd be even more traumatized than you are now. I don't know about that. I get why you feel that way. And I have no idea how one gets rid of that feeling. However much time goes by, all I know is that it's pointless. It's like a busted pipe. The more you force it... Nick, are you getting poetic on me now? If that doesn't make you smile, <laughs> I don't know what will.
Adam. Are you getting poetic with me? Son of a bitch. Tell Harley to call forensics. We've got work for them. No! It's too early, John. I don't... Do you even listen to me when I talk? Oh, God. Next week... Oh, here we go again. Next week? There's no traffic now. You know how it gets? If we don't leave before sunrise, we don't get there until lunchtime. I mean, honestly. <sighs> Next week, we should leave at a reasonable time. The kids need their rest. You're saying that as if I didn't care. Not again, please. I'm their father. Are you saying I don't care? No one said that, John. No okay. one. not going to win this fight. Mm -mm. It's over. telling you this.
I'm sorry, Ed. <laughs> it's not just the money, is it? You shrinks are all addicted to other people's pain. You... You get off on it. Tell me about your father. About his... See, case in point. Hmm. Please. Aunt Claire really loves you, huh? If she'd brought me all those books, I would have never left my room. What about the birthday cake she's making for you, huh? Come on, let's see if you remember the ingredients we have to buy. Okay, I'll say one, and then you say one. Baking powder? Eggs? No. Flour? Yes. Butter? Yes. Molasses? Yes. Well, I've held up my side of the bargain. Somebody must be exhausted from all that listening. So, vegan sandwich before going back home, hmm? You know, um... Uh, you do know that what you told me is not how things really happened, <laughs> right? <sighs> Addicts. <sighs> <sighs> that wasn't enough for you? You need a double dose of tragedy? <laughs> Look at the spiral, please. Hmm. Um, you got me out of the hospital. You're a friend of Robert's. But, mm -mm 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 -mm. you've just used up the last favor I owe you. So, next ones. Sandwich. Car. Road. Bed. Got it. Got it. You're nine. Your parents woke you up in the middle of the night to go on a trip. You fell asleep in the car. Your sister is next to you. You hear your parents, and gradually, you wake up. I'm... I... I am... No! You have several plastic figurines. Can you describe them to me? 
There. They are from... Please, no. No. Wake up, Eddie. No. Wake up. No. Wake up. No! Wake up. No! Damn it! I can't do this anymore, John. I can't. Do you even listen to me when I talk? Next week. What did you promise me, hmm? Next week. For richer, for poor, in sickness, and in health. Until death fucking do us part! God damn it! Next week, I'm taking the kids, and I'm leaving. The sooner you get to be it in with your him. head. Am I right? Not again, please. With Ginny's father. You seriously think I didn't know about that? That I don't know who he is? There's nobody, John. Nobody. You're not gonna tear this family apart. Mm-mm. Do you know why your mom decided to have Jenny? I don't get it. She was just a little seed. Before, you said your mother winked at you at that point, but actually, she only looked at you. Why? She would do that sometimes. Why did you forget the last look she gave you, Ed? I don't know. It's not my fault. I didn't do anything. Do you go from San Francisco to Cerro Lake every weekend? Mainly in the summertime. The house in San Francisco is really small. And Dad says his imagination doesn't fit inside, so it ends up jumping out the window. Especially now that they've turned his office into Jenny's room, right? Hmm. Mm-hmm.
Did you hurt your collarbone? The doctor will say the seatbelt saved me, but it burnt my skin. She's asleep, isn't she? You know she's not, Eddie. She's crying. Jenny's crying. Is she okay? Don't worry, Eddie. Before, you told me a blowout caused the accident. Yep. But you didn't hear anything, did you, Ed? That's what Dad will tell the police. Will your father keep drinking from that day until his last? Aunt Claire won't let him. Aunt Claire? She'll come from San Bernardino to take care of us. Do you still have that figurine? I'll lose it. You have to know the truth. Your father did something that... He's in rehab! You can't go in there! What did you do? Miller. Sheriff Reyes. That's me. What the hell did you do? Dr. Lomas? That's me. Oh, uh, sorry. I, uh, should, um, I have to talk to Mr. Miller. Could you wait outside just a minute? I'm sorry to inconvenience you, but... Mr. Miller is my patient. Whatever you need to tell him, it will be in front of me. I understand your predicament, Doctor. But it's serious. I wouldn't be asking you if... I understand your predicament as well, Sheriff. You barged into my patient's room without permission. What's so urgent? Do you have a warrant explaining why? I know this might seem uh, irregular, but uh, if I could just... I don't care what it looks like. I'm not leaving this room. Doctor. Please. Dr. Lomas. I'll take care of this. Please. Thank you. You don't like me, I don't like you. Let's get to the point.
Okay, Miller. 27 years ago, on Brody Canyon Bridge, your family... No. No, no. No. And now the exact same thing happens. And I'm supposed to believe it? We searched the car. No sign of a certain fay or a baby. <laughs> the police academy isn't what it used to be. Convince me. I'm sure you have their pictures on your phone, right? It was the first freaking thing I checked when I woke up. All deleted. Sure. Describe her then. Height? Uh... Average? Five foot eight? Ethnicity? Caucasian. Very fair skin. Blonde, brunette. Practically silver. Shoulder length. Straight. Eye color? White. Green. So, how did it all happen? Here we go again. I was sleeping. Faye woke me up. Jenny had a slight fever. Jenny? My daughter. Jenny. We got dressed to take her to the hospital. We got in the car, and that's it. That's it. I told you, I don't remember. Amnesia. Hmm. Comes in handy sometimes, doesn't it? I suppose you know they ran some tests when you got to the hospital. Huh. Enlighten me. What did they find? Sedatives. <laughs> Do I look like someone who has trouble sleeping? I've been in bed for a week. Antipsychotics. <sighs> I doubt that. Does Advil count? Alcohol. Yeah, right. Well, according to the truck driver who saved you, you reeked of booze. I hate the stuff. Can't even stand the smell. Mm, even an 18-year-old Durrell Special Reserve? It takes a lot of guts to commit suicide. Or maybe it, it takes the opposite. If that truck driver hadn't showed up, would you have done it? No, I was getting down from the railing when he knocked me on the ground. Had you met him before? The... the truck driver? What are you suggesting? <laughs> <sighs> you had me confused for a minute there, Sheriff. I thought, how is this guy who's been out to get me since forever the only one who seems to believe Faye exists? But I get it now. I stopped counting the amount of times you pulled me over for a breath test. Now you finally have an excuse. You want to lock me up for a damn DUI? And, if you can also peg involuntary manslaughter on me, all hail the sheriff. <laughs> involuntary manslaughter? You're going to have a hard time proving anything else. We'll see about that. You are good friends with the Franklins, aren't you? What? What have they got to do with any of this? Do you have a gun permit? I'm a writer. The pennant is mightier than the sword and all that crap. Then, what's that Glock 19 doing in your glove compartment, huh? What are you talking about? Are you messing with the little sanity I have left? Do you and Samuel Franklin go fishing a lot? Is that a crime? Huh. You barely have any friends. Him, I'd say he had, what, none? I don't know. A few years ago, I went for a walk in the woods. He was fishing. I spooked his fish. He ended up showing me the ropes. We go down to the river every once in a while now. Or he just stops by when he's bored. Just your average boy meets old guy story. How do you get along with Esther Franklin? We were close when I was a kid, but... That ended when I went to San Bernardino with Aunt Claire. When I came back about nine years ago, we started to reconnect. She still cares about me, for some reason. <sighs> 
All right. That's it. What's going on? Mr. Franklin is missing. Samuel Franklin died from a bullet to the head. The same day, you almost killed yourself. No. 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 <sighs> Too many people have touched it. And Miller's probably the only one who hasn't. Looks like he wasn't lying about this. Hmm. What if I handed it to him? With some excuse to look at something. Maybe a picture of this Fay. What did he say she looked like? No. If Miller has seen any detective movies, he'll know what I'm trying to do, especially being a writer. Miller. What am I, Sheriff? A lunatic? <laughs> a murderer? Right now, we are just a suspect. We'll see what happens. What about Esther? We have to find her. A search party is all set for this afternoon. We'll find her. And I can't even help. Fucking vertigo. <sighs> There's something I want you to see. You could be a huge help. This was just sent to me. She was seen around the park. Is it Faye? She was blonde, yeah. But she had green eyes. Zoom in. Look at the details. Maybe she was wearing contacts or something. Uh, no. Sorry, but no. Hey, Sheriff. Find Esther. By the way, we found your cap in the ravine. What cap? The one with the stars and stripes. No. Please stop. Thanks for 
for what you did before. For confronting the sheriff. You were my patient. That's part of my job. I still am. Please help me. When the sheriff walked in, you were about to tell me something. Don't leave me hanging. I'm still missing a piece of the puzzle. Just one. Give me that piece and I'll tell you everything without the fear of hurting you anymore. Before your childhood accident, all days, maybe weeks earlier, if that's what I think it is, something your father told you about your mother or the other way around. Something that made you take sides. Ah. Uh, um. I think I might have something for you. Um. I. I think. Yeah. It was the weekend before the accident. I was completely obsessed with this sea shanty. Well, more than the actual shanty, I had a thing with this verse. I don't even know why. What verse was it? What did it say? Special Agent Miller, I have an extremely important mission for you. Dad, I was about to check on Jenny. Relax, Agent Miller. 
The First Lady's on it. As you may well know, we're in the midst of a cold war with our worst enemy. The Thousand Sucker Kraken. Forget those fantasies, Miller. This is serious. I'm talking about the darn KGB. Several of their agents have placed three nuclear bombs in one of our top secret submarine bases. Only you can tackle this mission, sir. Good point, Miller. You're such a darn genius, Miller. You'll make a fine major. Hmm, where was I? Ah, yes. A super dangerous mission. Only an agent with my experience and training can succeed under these circumstances. But didn't you say you had a mission for me? And I do, Special Agent Miller. And that it was super important? And it is, Special Agent Miller. How important do you think it is to protect the First Lady? Extremely important, sir. I couldn't have said it better myself. Did I say Major? Miller, you'll make a fine Colonel. Nothing is more important than the First Lady. And who are we protecting her from, sir? That's what we need to find out. Precisely that. There's a double agent among us. A traitor. While I'm away on my mission at the top secret submarine base, and I deactivate one, two, even three bombs, you will become the First Lady Shadow. Follow her wherever she goes, but keep a low profile. Make sure to document any suspicious activity that might help us identify the traitor. And remember, it could be someone close to the First Lady. Sir, yes sir. Good luck, future Colonel Miller. The country's in your hands. Where's the other one? It's okay, sweetie. Lieutenant Flanagan, do you copy? I do, sir, just like you ordered. Do you have a visual of the presidential suite? Good. Let me know when she exits and heads towards the conference center. I can't risk her seeing me. <gasps> Darn it, Flanagan! I told you to inform me if she left the presidential suite. Oh, did she leave? She's in the dining hall. Follow her and hide. How are you? No, your brother just left to get groceries. Oh, she's just precious. Yes, she gets plenty of air. I'm making dinner now, but in about 15 minutes, I'll, I'll take her outside and we'll go to the lookout by the lake. Yes, the lake that's by my house. How would that be dangerous? Don't worry, I won't let her get close to the railing. We'll just sit on a bench. Okay, I'll definitely tell him you called when he gets back. Flanagan, 
I told you to search the presidential suite for microphones, didn't I? And so I did, sir. But there weren't any. Do me a favor. Schedule an appointment with the CIA eye doctor, will you? Yes, sir. For who? Just do it. I have a feeling things are about to get dirty around here. There's still something missing. Jenny! <gasps> no! My little sweet pea! Come on, sweetie. Time to wakey wakey. Who wants to go see the lake views? Come on, don't be a little sleepyhead. Or your Aunt Claire will never let us hear the end of it. You'll see. It's such a beautiful day out there. And when we get back, you'll have your bottle. You like <gasps> that, don't you? Close call. Sir, I scheduled that appointment with the eye doctor. Um, okay. All right, good flanking. Yeah. Always glad to help, sir. Not the sharpest tool in the shed. I swear, I don't know why certain people are even born. We intercepted the enemy's letters to the traitor a while ago. But not even our supercomputer can decipher a baby language. Are you following the first lady, sir? Not yet. I need my camo helmet first, but I can't find it. Oh, I washed it for you, sir. I left it in the hangar. By the tanks and motorcycles. Flawless design brought to you by our chief engineer, Captain Samuel Franklin. Although, why is there no jungle camouflage on my jungle camouflage helmet, Flanagan? I removed it, sir. It was not aerodynamic, sir. <sighs> Another great fix by our chief engineer, Captain Samuel Franklin. Any updates on the first lady's position, Flanagan? She crossed the yellow flowers track, and she's now in the lookout.
No way. Yes, sir. The double agent is manipulating the first lady. She's setting us up. Sir, she stole a microchip from my safe and is accusing me of leaving it for the KGB to find. And the first lady's buying it. Now, if that's not suspicious activity. Well, and uh, that's all, I guess. Hmm. Shall we? Lieutenant Flanagan, we have new mission. A KGB agent has infiltrated the presidential palace with a single goal, to drive a wedge between the president and the first lady, putting an end to a vital, long-standing alliance. But we won't let the KGB get away with it. We will unmask the traitor and save our nation. I know you found the missing figurine, after all. Mom will give it to me later. She'll be a bit angry. You weren't obsessed with an entire verse, were you? Only with one sentence. Leave her, Johnny. Leave her. Maybe. Why don't you trust your sister, Jenny? Because she takes up all of Mom's attention, and then she can't be with me or with Dad, and then Dad gets mad.
What did you think when the police officer arrived, Eddie? That he was going to arrest someone for misbehaving. Yeah, or I, I don't know. What did you think right there, Eddie? That Jenny isn't bad. It's the police officer that's bad. How did Jenny get a hold of that figurine? Sometimes Dad sleeps in Mom and Dad's room in the morning or in the afternoon. And Mom comes and changes Jenny's diaper on my bed. So I go outside to play. Why are you taking those pictures, Ed? Because things just used to be better. What? It can't be that bad. So, you are going to tell me now Right? You've been repressing and twisting your own memories since... Your father was not the person you remember. At some point, um, when you were little, he became obsessed, he got lost, he started drinking.
Why did I do it? Jenny... Plenty of older brothers feel jealous of their siblings. It's normal. It would have passed. It was all my fault. No, it wasn't. The picture. If I hadn't... The same thing would have happened. Sooner or later, your dad would have found out. And instead of an accident, it would have been a slap, or a beating, or a push, or a knife. And what good does knowing do me? You've been carrying that guilt for years. Building a prison of fake memories just to hide it. From yourself. From everyone. And it's been gnawing at you. But you need to let it go. Not today. <laughs> oh, Ed, you're the most loyal person I've ever met. Doctor? It's Sheriff Reyes. Doctor, sorry to bother you this late, but... A heads up would have been nice, you know. <clears throat> I sent you a few messages on the way, but... Uh... Ah, it was you. I'm sorry. It's late, I know. We were looking for Esther Franklin until just now. Did you find anything? There's still hope. I'm... I'm sorry about this morning. And you know I don't want to put your career on the line, but... We both want to get to the bottom of Ed Miller's story. Why don't we help each other? There's a really pretty lookout near here. We could discuss this. I'm telling you, it's bad news. The gun, the bottle, his connection to the Franklins, the whole implausible story about the... <clears throat> Mm. 
Like I was saying, there are too many signs, huh? I'm not saying he's guilty, it's just... It's hard to see it any other way. Don't you think, Doctor? There's one just like it in my favorite movie. I can't say I'm a movie buff myself, no. It's incredible to think that the tree was almost 600 years old here. That it died here. And that we've only been here about this much. Here, no, a year later, I was at a protest march. The police charged us. I fell. Uh, L.A., right? Did they crush you? Three knee operations. What were you doing at the time? I don't know. Patrol during the day to make a buck, study at night to be a sheriff. I was born about here. You? About the same. What were you doing that day? Do you remember? <sighs> sure. I woke up at 6.30, like I do every day. Turn on the radio while I shaved and uh, the second plane had just hit. I remember looking in the mirror, not recognizing myself, not my face, my hands, my bathroom, none of it. I took care of people with similar symptoms during those weeks. Two thousand sixteen. <laughs> I became sheriff. Congratulations. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Two thousand and sixteen. All right. I didn't know what I was getting myself into either. <laughs> Did you become sheriff too? <laughs> I fell in love. Ah, <laughs> damn. Of course. Sorry. I have to insist. I know Miller is hiding something. He's lying. To lie, you have to be aware that you're lying. Nice one. But Miller knows exactly what he's doing. He only has trouble remembering certain things. Things that you do remember. I, I, I don't understand. I know you're hiding something. What do I have to do with this? Your romance with Ed's mother. In the early 90s, you did a little more than just work and study to be sheriff. How did you find out? Through Miller? How did he... Did Maddie tell him? He saw you together, but buried that memory until today. We were inseparable as kids. I spent more time at her house, the one you've been to, than my own. In high school. <laughs> Everyone thought we were dating. <laughs> then... She went to school in San Francisco. We'd meet up some weekends, until one summer. She came back arm in arm with John Miller. We didn't see each other for years. It would have been five or six 
when we ran into each other and uh, started meeting. A coffee, a walk, dinner, a motel. Later, pregnant with Jenny, she distanced herself from me. I thought the girl had helped her marriage, that she was happy. Fucking happiness. She's a beautiful girl. Isn't she? Beautiful and a bottomless pit. You'd gobble your mummy right up, wouldn't you? Thanks for coming after all this time. How have you been? Work and school take up all my time. I'm sorry. I didn't want Jenny to grow up in a broken home. Or Eddie. I understood back then. And I still do. You owe it to your kids. I felt guilty. John deserved a chance. I thought the baby... I was wrong. Is he still drinking? He's burying me alive. What did he do? If he touched a single hair... Report him, and I'll make sure you get a restraining order. I'm going to leave him. I... I'm going to tell him next week. Don't tell him anything. Get the kids, pack your bags, leave a note, and go. I have to tell him. I can't just... just take his son away from him without at least... Jenny is yours. Take her. She's got something in her hand. Oh, get it, will you? Gently. Oh, Eddie, he leaves stuff everywhere. See? She has your eyes. And he... doesn't suspect anything? Since the very beginning. How do you know she's not... John's? You've never tried to sleep with someone after you've downed a bottle of whiskey, have you? <laughs> well... What am I saying? You're ready for water after half a beer. Come with me. The three of you. Let's take it slowly. I can't risk custody. That was the last time I saw them alive. Was it you who found them? I wanted to kill that son of a bitch, but he took that away from me too.
Nick, no! What went through your mind in that moment? Why did you move it away? Hmm, that's something I could only tell my psychiatrist. Thanks. Now, do you understand? John Miller was dangerous. His son is too. The same look in his eye. I'm worried about you. That look in his eyes you mentioned. What psychology manual is that in? I can't quite place it. <sighs> Sorry. I didn't mean to. I just meant... Hold on. You believe him? About what? Faye. Yes. <laughs> no. You're certain Faye isn't the figment of a writer's... Uh... A psychopath's imagination? I'm not interfering in your job, Sheriff. Don't interfere in mine. Throughout my career, I've met a great deal of psychopaths. And believe me, when I know someone, I really know them. If there is a psychopath in this story, it's not Ed Miller. Faye has a very seductive smile, but would someone with such a messed up ankle look that happy? Hmm. Look at poor Faye trying to smile despite the pain. What kind of maniac wouldn't feel sorry for her?
Why are you looking at me that way, kitty? I stole your blanket, so now I'm the enemy, huh? <laughs> Not yet. But one day, kitty. <sighs> Mr. Mysterious, you there? Have you eaten? I'm hungry. I can order something online. Something? My favorite. There might even be leftovers in the fridge. Something left over? Even better. I'll check the fridge. Don't order anything, okay? One out of five on my list of things to make sure he delivers. But I'll need a more secure base of operations. Mmm, this wine is delicious, Faye. Plus, you won't hear me say it out loud, but it's making all my blood flow down into a certain part of my body.
I still have things to do. Emilio Salgari, the son of the Red Corsair. 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 Nice to meet you, Mrs. Miller. You have no idea how inspiring it is to see you in that cheap-ass, slutty little outfit. Mr. Miller? What undertaker did you murder and steal that suit from? Finally, time to smile again. Someone looks pleased. Am I interrupting a special moment? Huh? Consider it my way of saying thank you. Hmm. <laughs> a toast? My favorite one's missing. The son of the Black Corsair. Emilio Salgari, right? Do you like Ed Miller? You know what? Me and that guy have history. Huh. So, what kind of history? The bad kind. One day, Kitty. One day.
<laughs> Sweetie, the more I get to know you, the surer I am. Let time take its course. Relax, I've been on the pill for years. Go ahead and rest. Don't worry, sweetie. I'll be back, I promise. Let's say I believe you, that Miller is innocent. Where do we go from here, and what other leads do we have? Hmm? Let's find out if Faye really exists, or existed. I have the date she appeared, and the name of the agency she may have rented a car from. Sounds good? Weren't you not going to interfere with my work? Touché, Sheriff. Trust me, Doctor. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, don't worry about her. Come up. <laughs> My aunt just heard about the kind of therapy we're doing, and that it's not going too bad. 
She's never been a huge fan of shrinks, you know. She's kind of a sore loser, but she'll definitely get over it. Though, she seemed pleased with you up until now. You've never been a fan of shrinks either. Well, since we're rewriting my memories, why not do one more? Ugh! Ah, uh, that's how you fix things. By offering to help me. Over and over again. But... But do I deserve that help? Huh? Do I deserve it? Don't I deserve to rot in jail? Hmm? Or an insane asylum? Or, or maybe... Maybe I should have jumped off a bridge. I'm dangerous. It'd be better for everybody. It might not seem that way with many people, but we're all a bit broken inside, and we all deserve help. The sheriff is out to get me. I don't blame him. Faye, Jenny, Samuel, Esther. When they searched your car, no bodies were found. They might still be alive. Tell me all about Faye. Even the smallest details could help, all right? Why don't we just... get that spiral going and... spare us my lies? Hmm? We need to know what you remember so we can understand why you forget. <sighs> After that one night together, she disappeared like she'd never existed. Hello? No last name, no number, no message, no address. Just her wine glass. It took me a while to wash it. I don't really know why. Funny, huh? As if it... Blah. Were you expecting her to come back? I've always been alone. It's my natural state. Since the beginning, I assumed she was like me. But something much better happened. Remember that thing I said about looking out the window, focusing on something and, and letting my fingers free write? Yes, I believe the day you met Faye, you'd chosen... Mm, a tree? Ha! <laughs> Who's got the bad memory now? Starting that day, I made it into a routine.
Some days, something interesting would come out of it. Most others, nothing would. But I decided that my next book would be a collection of short stories or vignettes, in the style of Bierce or Kafka. New book? How is it coming? I'll tell you later. A little over a month ago, <laughs> about a year since uh. Faye's first visit. I thought it was Samuel. We've been playing a lot of chess and we're supposed to pick up a game we started the night before. What did you think when you saw her? I think I was happy to see her. I had no reason to feel any differently. Her name is Jenny. She's your daughter. It wasn't surprising to you that she had the same name as your sister? Yeah, but not as much as the other news. And so, <laughs> guess what she told me, Doctor? She said it was up to you whether you acknowledged paternity? Exactly. She said she was sure I was the father. That it would have been unfair not to tell me. That she didn't need my help or my money. But if I recognized her as my daughter... I could be in her life. And if you decide not to, it's fine. We'll leave right now and you'll never see us again. But call us a taxi, please. You didn't call one, did you? You're on a roll, Doctor. And so, I looked at Jenny. I guess it goes without saying that I've never felt emotional around babies. But... She reminded me so much of my sister that, I don't know, I felt something. Of course, I didn't give Faye an answer. I was confused and I told her I needed time to give me a few days. I said they could stay with me instead of at a motel. You didn't let Faye and Jenny stay in the main house? There's just my room there. About ten years ago, when I moved back in, 
Aunt Claire started visiting me a lot, so I converted the old garage into a guest house. My aunt is better if kept at a safe distance. After that first night, did anything ever happen again between you two? No, no. I don't know. It was all so strange, as if we were suddenly 20 years older. It would have been hard for me to see her that way. Not to mention how efficient we were the first time. She never told you her last name? No last name, no address. I would have told the police. I didn't ask her for her number either. She never left the house that whole time and... <laughs> I guess we were past that stage by that point. Did she tell you anything about her life? Apparently, she was about to start a master's in something like what you did, I guess. But she had to hit the brakes because of her pregnancy. Only child, father a widower, pretty well off, pretty old and hoping for grandkids. Did Faye do anything strange? Anything that took you aback? Uh, no. She spent the whole day with the baby, taking care of her, playing. <laughs> it sounds dumb, but I was even a little jealous. We're all dumb. Did she tell you why she disappeared that first night? Did she apologize? No, and I didn't ask her to. You have any idea how many times I've done that? <laughs> <laughs> I've got the gist of it. When you slept together the first night, she said she was on birth control, didn't she? Did you talk about it afterwards? She was sure she hadn't skipped a single day. But, of course, no method is 100% effective. A young girl, single, with an unwanted pregnancy. She didn't think about getting an abortion? She told me that she was going to at first, but after a few days, <laughs> I think I get it. Wow. 
How long were they here? I've been thinking back on it these days, and I'd say it was exactly three weeks. They got here on a Sunday, and as you know, they disappeared on a Sunday. Are you okay? Do you want to take a break? No. Anyway, the first two weeks felt good, but then things got warped. Like my head started to rebel. Like if it was pissed off that I was doing well. Wake up, Eddie. Wake up. Why'd you do it, sweetie? Mom? I love you, Mom. I miss you. We're doomed because of you, sweetie. You're no better than him. Was it a recurring nightmare? Every night. Always the same message. And the days weren't much better. I'd wake up exhausted, couldn't focus on anything. For years I hadn't thought about them constantly. I hadn't relived their deaths over and over again. Until... Ed! 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 Huh? Jenny's temperature is 103.6. Huh? Okay, okay. What should we do? Let's go to the hospital. <sighs> Get dressed. <clears throat> I'm unlocking your car. I'll wait for you in there. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat>
Why'd you take so long? I got the book, just in this case. This is not the time for books! <sighs> okay, sorry. I'm just stressed out. There. Ugh, no. I'll get them. Don't worry. And that's it? Until I woke up on the bridge. Yeah. It was like another one of my nightmares. It's clear as day that my car plunged down into the canyon, that the truck driver found me on the bridge, but what I remember seeing... Is my dad once again choosing to abandon me? I tried to reach him without him noticing me, but... Well, we both know what I remember. Should we try what I forget? Wake up, Eddie. Wake up. Why'd you do it, sweetie? Do you remember what time you went to bed that night? Around 11? Very early for me, but I was exhausted. Focus on your sister's face, please. Is there anything unusual about it? Her eyes, they're brown. They'd always been blue. And do you remember what color Faye's baby's eyes are? Brown. Focus on your mother's face, please. Focus on her and tell me what you see. She has face face. But she's my mom.
Are those the clothes you were wearing that day? Yes. The exact same ones? The exact same ones. Can you see anything unusual outside? No, there's nothing weird. The moon, the stars, the lake, everything's normal. Nothing missing or extra. Nothing. Is there anything odd about the bathroom? Anything out of place? No. Everything is normal. Are you sure those tire marks were made by your car? Could be. Next to the marks, are there any footprints? No, the ground is really dry. Can you make out your father's features? He's really far away. Focus on your feelings, on your body. It's weird. I'm exhausted and at the same time full of energy. My head hurts, my neck, my eyes feel heavy and tired. Do you recognize your father, his face? His back is to me. And his body? He looks a little... Shorter. So? So?
What did I tell you? Doctor, you're scaring me. Julia? When we dream, we lose some of the details. We, we see certain things extremely clearly, but the rest tend to be out of focus. You remember very concrete details, including the exact time down to the minute. Doing the math, the first time you dreamt about your mother, you should have been in stage two of NREM sleep. The probability of dreaming in that, during that phase is minimal. Am I supposed to be understanding something of all that?
Why didn't I steal his key? Your little sweetheart is drugged up, but if you start meowing and wake him up, This time you'll wake up.
You can stay. Of course, with his obsession, it's only normal he has books like this. Hmm, sleep a little more. You need it. I'll clean up. Ed! 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 Huh? Jenny's temperature is 103.6. Huh? Why'd you take so long? Okay, sorry. I'm just stressed out. Here. Oh. I'll get them. Don't worry. Shut up! Seriously? Are you sure fate? I don't see any other explanation. I'm positive. So, Jenny? Is she alive? Where is she? Who is she? That I do not know. How do we... what do we do? We have to find out who Faye is. Could Faye be a girl who got offended by the way you ended things? Um, there are quite a few of those. Don't look at me like that. I never make any promises, and I'm always honest about what I don't want. But I know what you're thinking. I could look, I don't know, through my text messages? She said she was a fan, right? Now we're gonna believe her? The best lies are partly true. Touché. I have a folder with fan mail, and I could look through Twitter. I don't know if I told you this before, but... Sheriff Reyes is on it. Okay, let's recap. I look for fans I like Kathy Bates in misery try to remember crazy ex-girlfriends, and you and your new friend, the Sheriff, do whatever you have to. What? You, you're, you're walking. <sighs> <laughs> it's a 
fucking gunshot. Just analyze the damn bullet and see if it came out of Miller's gun. What's taking them so long? Why don't you call them? Get serious. Tell them Reyes is pissed off. If there's still no word by the time I'm back, I'll call them. All right. Are you gonna be a while? In 500 yards, take the exit towards Airport Road. Hold on. Are you at the airport? Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain. That's out of our jurisdiction. Uh, I'm following, uh, a false lead. What? Why? It's information that Julie, uh, Dr. Lomas got from Miller. The guy is full of shit, and it could be a pack of lies, but it's all I've got. Julie, Doctor? Am I missing something? What? You're not missing any shit. What's wrong? I missed the place because of you. If I get a ticket, you're paying for it. All right, all right. Will you make it for the search party? South Sector, 530? South Sector, 530. I'll be there. We'll find her today, right? Better believe we'll find her, kid. You have my word. Thanks, Nick. Did they leave? The owner and the mechanic? What if the alarm goes off? Hey, hey, you! We're closed. Estamos cerrados? On a fair May? Wir haben geschlossen. Siamo chiusi. Moshiwake gozaimasen. Sorry, sir. Do you speak my language? We're out of cars, comprende? I do. But... I can't rent you a car. They're all booked. Zero cars available. Well, I should say I have minus one car available, since this one broke down, and they're supposed to pick it up in two hours. But I have zero mechanics plus one shitty day, so if you'd be so kind, take a right on your way out. You'll see my competition in 300 yards. Tell them Amber Wong sent you, and that they owe me one. Have a nice day. Um, I wasn't planning on renting a car. I'm Sheriff Nick Reyes, and I need your help. Any other day I'd be happy to help you, Sheriff. Just not today. Plus, you're not in uniform, which makes me think you're either outside of your jurisdiction, or this is unofficial business. So, God bless America, and have a nice day. Unless... you're a skilled mechanic. 
know anything about motors? You think you could fix this car? Please say yes, you're gonna say yes. I wish I could guarantee it. I'll do what I can. It turns on, but no matter how much I step on the gas pedal, it doesn't budge. <sighs> that selfish bastard. I should have known he'd bail out on me, asshole. If you ever start a business and hire your significant other, well, never break up during high season. Can you open the hood for me, please? <clears throat> hmm. What? I don't know yet. Wow, that's a great start. Try turning the key in the ignition, please. Can you press the accelerator? I just told you, the car won't budge no matter how much I press that pedal. Are you sure you know how these things work? Now I see why you said you'd try. Put the car in drive. Huh. What? It's what I thought. That's why I asked you to put it in drive. The clutch cable is loose. I'll need to unscrew the cables from the terminals, remove the battery, attach the loose cable. Where do you keep your tools? In the parking area. The big chest. Locked? Locked. No worries. The keys are in... No. No, 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 that... Son of a bitch took them. And he hasn't answered any of my calls or messages since we broke up. Oh, just wait till I find him. You. Break it, smash it, burn it, Bomb in if you have to. Just open the damn box. It's the customer for this car. I was just about to tell him my grandmother died so he'd cancel. I should tell him to come, right? We'll have to give it a shot.
Give it to me yourself. Start the car. Ah, hey! Sorry, sorry, sorry. You okay? Like I said, this isn't my day. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Are you alright? You know what I'm gonna do? Study mechanics for emergencies like this. I've got two college degrees. It can't be harder than making sense of a spreadsheet. I just can't do it all on my own. You know how hard it is to run a business like this? I'm gonna need somebody. A good mechanic. Better one than that idiot. Your turn. I appreciate the offer, but I'm not a mechanic, and uh, I'm not looking for a job. And I didn't offer you one. <laughs> Are you serious? We both know you just got lucky. I mean, about what you told me before. So tell me, how can I help you? I'm looking for a woman in her 20s, Caucasian, blonde, green eyes. You rented her a car last year between the 7th and 8th of October. She might have been coming from the airport. If I could check your records... It'll just take a second. Please? No. Any idea how serious the authorities are these days about data protection? So, I'm really sorry, but I can't help you. Of course, I can't stop you from stealing the information when I'm not looking. What's a girl to do if she has to run to the bathroom and has, say, zero mechanics to watch her desk for her? Given the insane morning I've had, you'll excuse me, right? A list of customers who rented a car between the 7th and 8th of October of last year. How about that? I hope you find your mechanic soon. And I hope you find that girl, Sheriff. Uh, one last thing. Is anything you told me true? Every last bit of it. Of course. I'll hold the job for you until Monday. Deal? I'm all ears. Where the hell were you? Hmm. Were you able to speak with ballistics? We got him, Nick. It's Miller. The bullet that killed my uncle is from the gun you found in his car. I'm gonna kill that son of a bitch. I know how you feel, kid, but... No, I'm not gonna kill him. I'm gonna smash his face in until he tells me where my aunt is. Adam, if you lay a hand on Miller, he'll come out on top. He'll report you, and we'll be even further away from finding your aunt. Wait for me at the station. We'll go together, all right?
La nomme Shit. Sorry, kid, but... Sheriff? I just received some crucial information. Um, not only does Faye exist, but... I'm going to arrest Miller. What? No! The gun from his glove compartment killed Samuel Franklin. No, Ed didn't kill anybody. It is what it is. Please, listen to me, please. Okay, go ahead. Did you visit the car rental agency? Yes. I had the names. No fay. If I'm right, it makes sense that she wouldn't use her real name. I know everything points to Ed, but it's a ploy. A ploy meticulously organized by a sick mind. Fay. Do you have proof? Not yet. Nor do you have evidence that the gun belonged to Ed, let alone that he was the one who shot it. Not yet. So, that makes two of us. Mm, I'm not 100% convinced, but what do you want me to do? Could you meet me at the Brody Canyon Bridge in an hour? Okay. Sure. See you there. Are you all right? Hey, you dented my car. The county will pay for any damages. What are you looking for? He's at the house, isn't he? Adam Franklin. You won't find the person who killed your uncle in that house. But I know where to start looking. He can't help you find your aunt, but I can. He would never hurt your aunt or uncle. He really cares about them. I have to stop by my motel first, but in 45 minutes, we're going to do a little experiment on the Brody Canyon Bridge. See you there?
I had to make sure. You ready? All those precautions, and now you won't even check that it's really me? Come on. <clears throat> okay. This is where you'll see what I see, which is what the drone sees, but without VR. Dave, do I have to arrest you again? Oh, God, what the I'm fuck? I'm not a, Are cop, you a cop, and nobody's arresting anybody. Sky D, Dave, offered to help us. The images his drone provides will help us test out a theory. And we'll see everything from here. Okay? <laughs> Are you giving away free donuts? Or what? Send the bird. I think Ed did see someone jump off the bridge, but I also believe that person made a pit stop before hitting the ground. Can you fly to the middle of the bridge and hover right beneath it? so far from the bridge, please. Not so far up. It's in the middle of the bridge, just under the road. Not that low, Sky D. It's right underneath the middle of the bridge. A duffel bag? So what? People come here to do yoga? for the views? Adam, call Harley, all right? We need a tactical unit to deploy rope operations under the bridge. I'm on it. Oh, and one more thing. Find that good Samaritan who saved Miller. 
The uh, truck driver? In case we forgot to ask him anything. So now what, boss? But why would she leave that bag there? Hmm, unless... Dave? Can you cross over to the other side of the bridge and head straight down to the bottom of the cliff? You're too far off. Stick closer to the base of the bridge. Keep descending. You need to almost touch the ground. Clear view of the face, Sky D. God, I think I'm gonna puke. The face, Dave. <laughs> Fucking yoga. Dave, show a little respect. Are you seeing this? Anybody know that chick? Sorry, the medical examiner was late. Let's hope she doesn't take too long to determine the cause and day of death. Although, it looks pretty obvious, right? <laughs> Are you busy? Should I step out for a second? Uh, no, no, it's nothing. Well, it always looked pretty obvious to you. If only I had listened to you sooner. I wouldn't have listened to me either, in your position. None of this made any sense. Other than in Ed's head, and I was the only one who had access to his mind. Should we examine it all? Please. I honestly don't know where to start. Our hacking specialist unlocked it. Plus, we also got her fingerprints, which are being cross-checked as we speak. Hmm. No text. No contacts. No calls. And I'm sure there aren't it. Wait. We do have some photos. Miller sleeping. Miller on the computer. Miller at the window. Damn, she was obsessed. Miller and the girl exists? She exists, but where is she? Oh, God. The living room. More living room. More living room. The kitchen. The office. What does she want? To build a model of the house? Basically, a mental one. Her smiling. Another smile. And another smile. Why all this smiling? 
Hmm? She's practicing. She may have had difficulty reading facial expressions in others, and therefore reproducing them herself. Seems like a classic psychopath. Lack of empathy, right? There are many causes. Neurodegenerative diseases, autism spectrum disorders. In many cases, the right education might have compensated for this type of condition. Almost all of those who suffer from it are perfectly adapted to and contributing members of our society, and no less happy than you or me. But, yes, in this case, seems like your classic psychopath. That's a really strong neuroleptic. In layman's terms? An antipsychotic used in acute cases of schizophrenia or manic disorders. Medication belonging to Faye, or...? It has plenty of side effects, the mildest being its narcotic properties. It can cause almost immediate sedation. Hmm. Narcotics and antipsychotics. Both were found in Miller's blood. Hmm. Any idea what it might open? I'd say it's for a car or some other vehicle. According to Ed, Faye took an Uber this time and a rental car the time before, so I don't know. Hmm. I still have to check the names I got at the agency. Are we sure that Faye used that to pretend she jumped off the cliff when she was actually lowering herself down to the landing where we found the bag. As sure as we can be that the body is Faye's. Wait. You finally convinced me. And now you want me to question it all again? We'd need Ed to confirm, but... From what he told me, it's just the kind of clothing Faye wore. So, Faye dressed up as John Miller. Did he always dress like that? Well, when he was young, he was more casual. Ed would have been, hmm, I don't know, five or six when John started dressing like that. <sighs> okay. <sighs> I don't know how I'm going to take this all in. Hmm. We haven't finished yet. It was in the glove compartment of his car, but I guess at this point, that doesn't mean much. I found it in Miller's car, but I could have sworn he hated whiskey. He has his reasons. Believe him. Where'd you get that? I found it on the cliff, near Miller's car. I thought it was his, but I guess I was wrong. Faye was a psychopath. She was obsessed with Miller. She sedated him, drugged him, planted false evidence all over the car, including the gun that killed Samuel Franklin, dressed up as John Miller, waited till Ed woke up, pretended to jump off of the bridge. <sighs> And ended up killing herself? Was that her plan? There are too many loose ends. And a baby that we have to find. Van Esther Franklin. What's missing? What aren't we seeing? <laughs> it's mine. What is with these young people and all these voice messages? Hey, I went to the company that truck driver Barry Dennison works for, but he was done for the day. They told me about this bar he goes to, but he wasn't there either. But I did see this picture on the wall. I'll send it over. <laughs> what? I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Uh, 
I'd go right now, but I'm hungry as a wolf, and this place, they should have been closed down months ago. Actually, I know some much, much better places to eat out in this town. Well, it's way past dinner time. If you'd like to, we could eat at one of those places you mentioned. Huh. I was just going to suggest one. Mama Louise makes the best almond chicken stew in the county. It's a short walk from here. Um, could Mama Louise make anything without animal products? Can she? Wait till you try her lemony garbanzo salad. Say no more. Wait, we haven't even looked at the list of drivers. We can look at it tomorrow. Afternoon? Afternoon. Careful there, old geezer. Late again, Dennison. I had a rough night. Okay. If this happens one more t It won't. I'll hook on the trailer and be out in a second. Hand over the routing sheet. Boss. There won't be any routes today, Mr. Dennison. The county... In appreciation of your work as a good Samaritan, on the 20th of September, on the Brody Canyon Bridge, we'd like to offer you a guided visit of the police station. Bastard. Citizen, I have rights. Does he? I do. And now I'm one driver short, thanks to the county. Fishing this Sunday. I'll get the bait. Normally, in these cases, my assistant plays good cop, and I play bad cop. But unfortunately, since you two started off on the wrong foot, I've got to do it all. <clears throat> so, it's your pick. Which role would you like to see me in? Mm, uh, in the role of a beaner? See? Hmm. I pick. We know you've been involved in something real ugly. If you cooperate and tell us everything that happened at the bridge that morning, well, I can't make any promises, but you'll probably get off scot free, or just about. I have no fucking clue what you want me to tell you. Hmm. I see. My buddy Ben, your boss, doesn't seem to like you very much. Hmm. Being sheriff, I got connections. It wouldn't be hard for me to get you into a better position. Working for the county, for instance. I hope your wingman is better at playing good cop because... Unfucking believable We found the cap at the bottom of Brody Canyon. 
Are you going to deny that it's yours? Must have fallen when I was saving a goddamn life. I found it over 200 yards from where you held Miller down. It was windy, for Christ's sake. True. A little. Blowing the other way, though. I'm surprised you haven't said the thing about talking to a lawyer first. I don't talk to lawyers. Hmm, okay. I'll do the talking if you want. They're all a bunch of... Uh... Hey, what are you doing with my phone there? Saving you the trouble. I have my rights. Let's see. Lawyers? That's illegal. I'll report you. My, you need a lawyer for that. Many favorites in your contacts? <sighs> Son of a bitch. I'll pick again. In fact, I have a few candidates right here. Hello? Sheriff Reyes, why is this number in Barry Dennison's contact list? On the app, I deleted his number after the first date. Bitch. Thanks, Miss Thompson. An agent will call you shortly. Hey, how's my favorite customer? Detained. Sheriff Ray is speaking. And you are? Oh. Tom DeLucci, owner of the Golden Blonde. So, uh, what did he do? Can you tell me when you saw him last? Yeah, sure. Always happy to cooperate with the police, Sheriff. He came to the club, I'd say, uh, a few weeks ago. Spent big money on girls and drinks. How much is big money? Almost ten grand. Listen, if he stole it, I had no idea. My clients prefer I don't ask. You know? Fucking greaseball. We'll be in touch, Mr. Delushi. Who do you think it is? Oh, boy. Looks like someone named Brainless Loser Barry is calling Crazy Bitch. We find your hat where it shouldn't be. Your number where it shouldn't be. Maybe we should stop playing games, huh? Sheriff, I just... I've got your lady friend's body over in the morgue. And good cop or bad cop, you're looking at a first-degree murder charge. Uh, I... I didn't! She... She jumped! <laughs> From the beginning, Dennison. <sighs> she came on to me at Lawrence, and I thought I'd be getting laid that night, but she gave me 200 bucks up front and promised me 10 grand if I helped her with something legit, no strings attached. Hmm? I had to be at the Brody Canyon Bridge a few days later, at 4.30 a.m.
no. What the hell? Is that a stiff? Darling, you can count me out. Uh -uh, no way. You think I'm capable of killing somebody? He's asleep. Sort of. I just want to scare him a little. Make him pay. What? What did he do to you? He stole from me. But something important, right? Everything. What do I have to do? Wait. A toast? Consider it my way of saying thank you. What is it? In your hand or in your vein? See you in the insane asylum, sweetie.
There's no sign of any babies or this Fey woman. It's a lot of money. <sighs> if you mention any of this to anyone, you won't have time to spend it. You, come. Push. Come on. That's my favorite. Forget it. I'll wait here. He'll wake up. Don't let him see you. He'll end up coming towards me. Follow him. Dad!
Make sure he doesn't kill himself. Let go. Let go of me. Then call the police and report an attempted suicide. Uh, yeah. I'm on the Brody Canyon Bridge. I just... Uh... I just saved the life of some guy who was trying to jump off the bridge. And, uh... They came... And that's it. You know what, Dennison? I believe you. So... I'm clean? Innocent? How could you have left out the part about the baby? What baby? Sorry I always keep you waiting. Harley was still printing the Horowitz file for me. Whose file? Lisa E. Horowitz. One of the three women to rent a car at Wong's just before Faye popped up at Miller's place. And considering her age, the only one who could be our buddy. I asked Harley to get us some details on her. We could take a look at it, if you want. And I thought this only happened in movies. Welcome to my life. Would you rather take one last look at the board before reading her file? Do a run through of the investigation? Just in case, I'd like to take a closer look at it. Okay. Where should we start? We know that on October 8th of last year, she showed up at Miller's house, slept with him, and vanished, only to show up a year later with a kid, Jenny, supposedly the daughter of Miller, who she's been gaslighting and drugging for weeks, disguised as his mother. Her motive? Revenge. According to what she told Dennison, he had taken everything away from her. Do you think that could have happened? Ed himself says that he doesn't like commitment and that he hasn't always treated women well. Though it pains me to say this, I think so. But the thing that puzzles me the most is, why did her plan backfire? Did she just slip and that's it? Did she get her revenge and then decide to end it all? Or what are we missing? There was a men's suit in a bag we found under the bridge, which Faye wore to look like John Miller, who'd committed suicide by jumping off the same bridge. There was also a neuroleptic, likely used to put Ed Miller to sleep. Rock climbing equipment, key to a vehicle we have yet to identify. Maybe it was her getaway car. Maybe. Faye paid him $10,000 to help her execute the last part of her plan. Together, they pushed Ed's car into the canyon. Later, Faye dressed up as John Miller, waited for Dennison to wake Ed up, and pretended to jump off the bridge. But wearing a harness with a rope hook to it, she hid right under the bridge and put the disguise and the climbing equipment in the duffel bag. While Dennison made sure Ed didn't jump, and called the police. Faye reenacted with total precision the accident in which... <laughs> in which Marty Miller died, or died. as well as her daughter. Ed Miller claims that his daughter, the new Jenny, was in the car. But the only evidence we have of her existence 
is a picture found on Fei's phone. On top of that, Fei wanted to make extra sure to frame Ed, so she planted a gun in the car, the exact same one that killed Samuel Franklin, and a bottle of whiskey, which is exactly what John Miller had been drinking before he killed himself. Ed has several issues that are not usually seen together. To start with, the death of his family at the hand of his father, which contributed to his becoming the most cynical patient I've ever treated. Then, there's the repression of that trauma, spurred on by his Aunt Claire. And finally, somebody arriving who was capable of harnessing that trauma to intentionally drive him crazy. And is that the case? Is he crazy? Crazy is a very relative term, but if Faye's aim was to strip him of his sanity, she did not manage to do so. We know for sure that the bullet that killed Samuel Franklin came from the gun found in Miller's wrecked car, and which we now know was planted there by Faye. It's no secret that she wanted to frame Miller so she may possibly be the murderer, but why did she kill him? What did Samuel Franklin do? What did he know? Frankly, after four days of searching, I'm starting to lose hope. I really want to believe she's still alive, but... We should prepare for the worst. Yeah. Shit. Adam. The Franklin's Ranch has lousy cell phone service, so somebody cut their landline so they'd have no means of contacting anyone the same night that Samuel Franklin was murdered. And just a few hours before Dennison called the police, claiming Ed Miller had tried to commit suicide at the Brody Canyon Bridge. Well... I'd say I've got a pretty clear picture. Let's look at the file. <laughs> Great. This is Lisa Horwitz, the day she graduated from Yale as a psych major, also as valedictorian. Anything come to mind? This isn't her best picture, but it's pretty clear this could be the same person. Faye told Ed that she just graduated as a psych major. So, it all adds up. Her studies would explain why she had knowledge of the narcotic effects of that drug, wouldn't it? Maybe. Let's see what the file says. Daughter of Peter and Marlene Horowitz, upper middle class. They were well off. They both died when Lisa was a little girl. Should we stick the picture on the board or skip to the next one? I can see a few connections here. You're the boss. I guess her family's social standing explains why a 23-year-old girl would have $10,000 on hand to give to Dennison. Right. Though, with everything she seems to have done, I wouldn't be surprised if she got the money through other, less legal means. How did her parents die? Could she have... No, no. Cancer. Colon and throat within the span of about two years. Hmm. 
mother and father died when she was a child. Her story resembles Ed's. Now for the fun part. After her parents' death, she became depressed. Self-harm, suicide attempts. She spent several months in the New Jersey Psychiatric Hospital. Possibly the most expensive one in New England. Rings a bell. I think a patient of mine went there. Who was it? The night before she was going to be released, her best friend from the hospital got drunk and jumped off the roof of the building. Isn't it odd that her best friend from the hospital killed herself by jumping off a building and that she ended up the same way? Yes. Maybe she jumped too. Maybe she was trying to emulate her. But why? Her friend got drunk right before committing suicide by throwing herself over the ledge. Like Miller's father. Jeez. Why is everything so convoluted? Did Ed Miller, after everything that happened to him as a kid, never go to a psych hospital? He almost did, but his Aunt Claire kept it from happening. She took him home to San Bernardino and essentially brainwashed him, burying most of his negative memories. Isn't it ironic that a former psychiatric patient would pursue psychiatry? It makes sense. A few people in my class had similar backgrounds. Some did it to get to know themselves better. Others wanted to give back, help people who had gone through something similar. When she was released, Lisa went back to New York under the guardianship of her paternal grandmother, Diane Horowitz, who a few weeks later fell down the stairs breaking her neck. What do we do with this one? Stick it there or pass? Don't you feel like her grandmother's death is too much of a coincidence? Yes, absolutely. What does this woman have against the elderly? Why does she go through so much trouble keeping Miller alive, but then go and kill his neighbor like it's nothing? This is from a couple of years ago. A climbing wall in her neighborhood in New York. Another coincidence? There's no question. Lisa is our fae. Hmm. What? You're still not sure. I've been wrong too many times not to have my doubts. And this is from a few weeks ago. Lisa Horowitz applied for a position as a psychiatrist in training at the only psychiatric hospital in our county. And she got it. She's supposed to be starting at the end of the month. Though... I doubt she will. Why would a wealthy young woman from New York with an outstanding academic record want to work at a hospital with such a poor reputation and so far from home? The doctor who was assigned to Ed at the hospital, before Robert Kerrigan hired me to treat him, was quite inclined to admitting him to a mental institution. The mental institution where Lisa was going to work is almost certainly the same one Ed would have been admitted to. Are you saying that? That was the last part of the plan. Become his psychiatrist and torture him. Let's take a look at her medical record. 
she weighed almost nine pounds when she was born. At age 11, her appendix was removed. Hmm. What is it? Let me make a quick call, just to double check. Pat? It's Reyes. Remember the body we brought in uh, yesterday? The blonde girl? Ah, perfect. Can you tell me uh, if she has a scar? The kind you would have from getting your appendix removed? Are you sure? Okay. Thanks, Pat. I can't believe it. It it has to be her. It's her. But no. No, no. We were so close. I'm sorry. It happens a lot. You think you have a bite. You tug at the line. And all you have to do is reel it in, but just at the last minute. I wouldn't give it too much more thought right now. We should get some rest. Wasn't my patient. Who? What are you talking about? How long ago was Lisa Horowitz released? Why is that important? Eight years? Eight years. What's her friend's name? The one who committed suicide. Veronica Garrigan. Dearest one, because there's nothing to fear. Let's wait together for the sun to show us the monsters not here. <gasps> They're gonna find me. You scared me to death. How'd you get in? I stole this from Mr. Fatbutt. What if he notices it's missing? Hmm, he got really sleepy all of a sudden. He'll be in bed for a while. If they catch you... I wasn't about to leave you all alone on your last night here. Are we best friends, or what? Besides, I've got a surprise for you. Come on, follow me. Uh, but I'm not sure if... Are we best friends or not? Besides, you're not a patient anymore. They can't touch you. Uh, all right. But I have to finish writing my diary entry for today. It's my routine. It's your routine. I'll wait for you.
We're the same age, aren't we? You're 15 too, right? Why? Hmm, no reason. They let you wear earrings that aren't clip-ons? It's a reward. I haven't hurt myself in a long time. My grandma sends them to me. She's so sweet. You're so lucky. You know what? Take one. No, I couldn't. Are we best friends or what? finished my entry. I'm gonna go pee and we Hold can... on. I want you to have something of mine, too. It's my lucky pendant. Nothing bad can happen to you as long as it's around your neck. But... Are we best friends or what? That looks so freaking cool on you. It's beautiful. All right, do what you gotta do and I'll show you the surprise. Oh, tremble not, my dearest one, because there's nothing to fear. Let's wait together for the sun to show us the monsters not here.
Starting tonight, you're my new best friend. Completely empty. Hey, don't look! Whoops! Sorry! That surprise? You sure you can't give it to me here? Positive. Uh, now I'm scared. What if you don't like it? Of course I'm gonna like it. This is so exciting. Wait for me here while I finish getting it ready, okay? At one point, I considered electrocuting you, but I need you to be disfigured from falling face first into the ground. Face to the ground. <laughs> How poetic. Not here. You wouldn't fall far enough. If there's one thing I'm going to miss, it's climbing therapy. I know what I'm going to do first thing when I get to New York. This is the spot.
close your eyes and give me your hand. Don't open your eyes yet. Go ahead and sit down. Here. On the ground. Mm-hmm. Ready. Open your eyes and make a wish. I'm gonna miss you so much. Blow. <sighs> Seriously. Why did I meet you so late, when I already knew I was leaving? Wanna open up a little more? What's that? Consider it my way of saying thank you. For the best week of my life. But... Veronica... Oh, come on! You're out of the loony bin tomorrow! It's your last chance to do crazy stuff. I've never, ever tried it. Ooh, are we playing Never Have I Ever? My turn to drink, then. Never Have I Ever... Played with the Rubik's Cube. Cheater! <laughs> Guilty! <laughs> well, you know. <coughs> oh, this is disgusting! You get used to it. Your turn. Never have I ever... kissed a boy. <laughs> what about a girl? Veronica! <laughs> well, either way, really. Never have I ever... had a room to myself. You haven't? But here... Here doesn't count. This isn't real life. Ugh. <clears throat> I had a really pretty room at my grandma's house. And now you're going to be living there again. Tell me everything about it. So yeah, it's a really sick house. New York is so cool. But it's my turn. Never have I ever made my own breakfast. <laughs> you haven't? Back home, the maid did it. Here, who knows? Well, I've never made my own breakfast either, so I don't drink. Never have I ever lived with my grandma. Ha! <laughs> You're saying that because I told you I lived with my grandma before coming here. You've barely told me anything about her. <sighs> She's cool. I don't know. And now you're going to be living with her again? I want to know everything about her. And she's a cool grandma. She doesn't even look like a grandma. She goes up and down the stairs like she's rocky. <laughs> My turn. Never have I ever... <laughs> Come here. I, I want you to feel the coolest thing you're ever going to feel in your life. <laughs> I think I'm a little cold. Follow me. I I'm scared. Take her shoes off. You'll grip onto the beam better. But 
I'm scared. <sighs> what did we say? That this was my last night to do crazy stuff. Plus, not only am I your best friend, but also the best climber in this madhouse. Who would you be safer with? <sighs> but I'm a little drunk. Give me your glasses. That way, you won't see so blurry. I'll be right behind you, holding on to you. Each step you take will be like flying over everything that ever hurt you. Veronica? When I'm not here anymore, will we still be friends? You'll always be a part of me. Face to the ground. Look what you've done. I hate you. I have to talk to Ed. Wait, let me see if I'm following this. All of the girls on this list are random hookups or fans that may possibly have something against you with reason? Oh no, oh no, no, no way. Oh, I was worried there. It's three pages long. Those are the ones I remember. I've lost contact with a lot of the others or forgotten their names. The number on the left is my guess for how angry they are, if that helps. Doesn't help, does it? Anyway, there was something important you had to tell me. I don't know what the best way to put this is, but... Don't ask why, but... I need you to tell me about Veronica Kerrigan. What? Why? No. Ed, please. It's important. What is this? Don't let a single day go by without Ed telling me about some childhood trauma? Ed. Even with what she did to me, tarnishing her memory isn't what I had planned. She was completely off her rocker, but she was a kid and the daughter of a good friend of mine. Well, at least at the time. Trust me. Please. Only since I owe you one. Sweetheart, what did the bread do to make you want to torture it like that? I don't know. It's fun. Can we go to the movies? Yeah, yeah, sure. 
If you take your medicine, we can go this weekend. Uh, Dad. What did the doctor say? <sighs> That's better. Can we go to the movies today? Oh, uh, right. Not today. I have to work. You always have to work. Sweetheart, I'm meeting Ed Miller at five, so... It's always Miller. Did you like our vacation last summer? Mm-hmm. Well, we wouldn't have gone to Paris or Rome if it hadn't been for Miller's book tour. It's always that Miller guy. And that's a good thing. If his second book goes like the first one did, I'll have a ton of time to spend with you. Besides, he's a great guy, and he really cares about you if you just give him a chance. But it's just... Sweetheart, I'm running late. I have to brush my teeth. We'll talk about this later. Veronica, baby girl, it's not Ed's fault that you got cut. It wasn't his job to pick up the broken glass. Better think of a different plan. Pick a wine, Ed. We have to work late anyway, so why not enjoy it? You should get to bed, Veronica. It's late. I'm not gonna let them. Not the doctors, not Miller, not anybody. No one's turning me into a lame brain or stealing dad from me. Hmm, no. What if something happened to dad? have plenty of pills, but they know they were mine. Hmm. What if Dad walks in and catches me?
Sweetheart, you in there? Veronica, are you there? Sweetie, sweetie, are you okay? I fell asleep, Dad. What's going on? Oh, thank God. I think this door is stuck. Can you open it from your side? I was really scared, Dad. <gasps> hey, come on. It wasn't that bad. I love you so much, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Ah, get cracking. I'm going to be late for a meeting, and you're going to be late for school. Yeah, right. The bus comes in 45 minutes. Okay. But don't get sidetracked, because then you'll miss it again. Don't stare at it like that. Be patient. Ten months till your birthday, and a promise is a promise. Who's daddy's pretty little girl? <laughs> Veronica. Be good, sweetie. Of course. Forty-five minutes. I'll save the photos there later. Maybe not. It has to look like he took the pictures. Everything was going just fine till Miller showed up. Daddy is mine, and everything will go back to being just fine. <laughs> Those were good times. You're the only one who knows what really happened to Mary. Yeah, I know I barely talk to you anymore, but I've grown up. There we go. We are the same. If they touch us, we fry them. Maybe not. It has to look like he took the pictures.
Ms. Veronica! The bus! I'm coming, Reginald! You're going to miss it again! <sighs> School's going to go by so slowly today. Hi, Ed. Where's my dad? I was just going to ask you the same thing. Oh. Then I guess I have to... be nice to people at our house? <laughs> be the host. Yeah. <laughs> you writers are so cool, knowing all those complicated well, words. Well, you know, we're not that cool. Should I tell Reginald to bring you something to drink? That's okay, I'm... I'm all right. Oh, man. I want to be a good host. Oh. Well, then. Yes. Whatever you want. Okay. Thanks. I brought you the whole picture, in case you want more. Wow, you're the perfect host. Well, it's hot as Hades. Even worse in this uniform. I'm gonna get changed. Have you heard from your dad? No! Where the hell are you, Robert? Cool. It'll be our little secret. I won't tell a single soul. Huh? Oh, Robert. Finally. Dad! I didn't think you'd be here so early. Uh, but you told me... What are you two up to? What's your little secret? Secret? Veronica? Um, Ed... Got here a little early because he wanted some pictures of me in my school uniform for something in his book. And he just took them on his phone, and they turned out super, super cool. You want to see them, Daddy? That was the end of a beautiful friendship. Robert threatened to report me to the police, but I did it myself. They arrested me, obviously. But when they inspected my phone... The picture's metadata indicated that the photos had been taken with another device. Plus, the time didn't match Veronica's testimony either. They found the same drugs in my blood as the ones present in Veronica's meds, as well as all the pills she hadn't taken still in her room. Robert apologized, but we decided not to continue working together. We grew apart, 
Not long after that, Robert checked Veronica into a mental hospital when I heard about her death. I called Robert in case... I don't know. He thanked me. We hung up and haven't spoken since. And that's it. I have no idea how Robert's been these last few years. I do. He came to me shortly after Veronica's funeral. He needed help and told me his story. Veronica was two years old when Robert adopted her. I never looked into her previous life, nor her biological family story. But I have a friend who might... Doctor, are you going to tell me what on earth Veronica has to do with any of this? Veronica did not die in the psychiatric hospital. She died two weeks ago. What? Veronica is Faye. As a kid, I'd pretend I was a pirate and unearth buried treasures. As a kid, I'd play spy games and discover classified information. As a kid, I made up a character I could talk to. As an adult, I buried my childhood. As an adult, I covered up my childhood. As an adult, the character I created took my place and never let me speak. My father succumbed to alcohol. My father got lost in obsession. My father lost sight of the world. My father became a stranger. My father was a reason my mother was unhappy. My mother couldn't put up with him anymore and searched. My mother's only way of coping was to search outside the home. My mother didn't deserve to be treated the way she was at home, so. My sister Jenny was a product of that search. My sister Jenny wasn't supposed to be born into my family. My sister Jenny was the only thing that... My father reacted in the worst possible way. My father caused an accident that killed. My father deliberately killed my mother and Alcohol I. led my father to cause an accident. Obsession caused my father to react. My mother and my sister died at the Brody Canyon. My mother and my sister were murdered at the Brody Canyon. My father wanted to liberate himself jumping off of that scene. My father didn't have the spine to own up to what he'd done and jumped off Remorse of that scene. led my father to jump off of that scene. I'd forgotten how I felt. Did I feel furious? Afraid? Sad? Did I feel hatred? Did I feel alone? Did I feel nothing? Did I feel everything? My Aunt Claire took care of me when I was left all alone. My Aunt Claire helped me forget. My Aunt Claire forced me to forget. My Aunt Claire buried my childhood. My Aunt Claire covered up my childhood. As a kid, I'd pretend I was a pirate and unearth buried treasures. As an adult, I buried my childhood. My father got lost in obsession. My mother didn't deserve to be treated the way she was at home, so. My sister Jenny was a product of that search. My father caused an accident that killed. Remorse led my father to jump off of that same. My Aunt Claire buried my childhood. I'd forgotten how I felt. For 27 years, I haven't known who I was. 27 years of writing to hide myself, only to turn into somebody I'm not. Drowning in sarcasm and lies. It's over. Hmm. I'm not ready to ride a motorcycle yet. Hmm. 
A pleasure meeting you, Ed. I'm Dr. Lomas. Doctor in what exactly? Doctor? You got one hour. One. Pathetic. What did you say your name was? I didn't say what my name was. Oh. Thanks, Mr. Mysterious. I'm Faye. If you could... bring me some ice. How did she do it? Hi! Guess who's calling? <laughs> the thing is... To see you again. Oh, and I think I lost an earring. If you find it, can you give me a call? Hmm, maybe. We'll see. I was so thirsty, I drank a glass of water this big in one gulp, Mom. think you're going? I asked you a question, Eddie. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> you think going out there and facing the world will make you someone? The hell it will. <laughs> I know you, kid. You're... a piece of junk like me. You're useless. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to love without hurting people. <laughs> you ruined everything you touch because you 
don't really care about anything but yourself and your pain. You become me. I'm not going to let you go around hurting people like I did. Just end your miserable life. Ed! Honey! You finally went outside! Come and give your aunt a kiss. I knew we could do it together, just like we did last time. Whatever you say, Aunt Claire. Eddie, honey, are you tired? Maybe you should lie down for a little bit. I'm fine. I don't need to lie down. It's just I'd like to talk about... <sighs> did you have breakfast? Do you want a little juice and some toast? Why did you make me forget everything that happened? What Dad did? Eddie... What have I always told you? Some things are better left unsaid. Or do you want some bacon and eggs instead? When mom and dad died and you took me with you to San Bernardino, I remember night after night of you telling me how much mom and dad loved each other. How both of them watched over me from the stars with Jenny, happy to see me happy. Because I had to be happy. You brainwashed me so I'd only remember the good things and bury the rest of it. I'm tired. I'm going to lie down for a bit. Aunt Claire. There are eggs in the fridge and enough oranges. After the nap, I'll make some three bean chili. We ate some not too long ago, but it's your favorite, so I guess... Aunt Claire. You owe me an explanation. I don't know what happened to your dad. I don't, or why he changed like that. It happened so fast. Over the course of a few months. Two years before the end. No reason or explanation. Your mother and I, we tried everything. We talked to him. We asked him. We begged him. We supported him. We got him help. But in the end, we lost him. All your mom had left was you. The possibility that you could still be happy in spite of it all. And when we lost her, I did my best. I'd better lie down for a little bit. I guess she needs a little time. Boss, we pulled the ivy off the wall. You want us to plant it somewhere else? Burn it.
I think I'm ready to write again. You like how the doc's coming along, boss? If I were you, I'd turn that frame over there into a bar, throw parties all day, all night. And people would be like, I got invited to a party at Ed Miller's yesterday. The writer, that guy, is living the life. If they only knew. When was the last time someone came over? Boss, you sure you want us to tear down the treehouse? It just needs a little paint and varnish. Stick to the plan. Tear it all down. Whatever you say, boss. But any kid would be thrilled. Where are you? Night to be six, Sam. You're still screwed. <laughs> Boy, don't you remember anything I taught you when you were little, huh? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, ah, uh, why do I always forget about castling? You always defend by attacking, okay? The trick is, always have a safe place for your most valuable pieces. No fun if there's no risk involved. No game if there are no pieces. What's wrong? Aren't you gonna move? You know, everyone thinks you're the county curmudgeon, right? You're not going to distract me, boy. No, seriously, I never understood that. I never understand a thing. I'm just an uneducated farmer. I don't even get why everyone thinks you're the standoffish county recluse. <laughs> Maybe that's why we tolerate each other. We're more alike than it shows. <laughs> you wish. By the way... I know it's not your birthday or anything, but... I saw this the other day in the window at the antique store on East Main. And I thought, well... Frankie Lane, chess... So, uh... I don't know. It's a valuable piece, so you know. Keep it in a safe place. Know what? In the early 80s, I was convinced that the Russians were going to fry us all with a nuclear bomb. 
So I built a bomb shelter under the ranch. I built it myself. With no help from anybody. You're kidding me. Anyway, it can house uh, up to seven people, has running water, its own energy supply. No one knows it exists. Not even my nephew, Adam. Just Esther. And me. Why are you telling me about it? Look at us. Look at us what? Neither one of us has... Uh, I mean... We're both missing... We're family. Uh, about that. I... Uh, I met... Uh, no. No what? <laughs> How long have you known? Since Esther saw you leaving the mall. She saw the diapers. In the trunk of your car, too. I've been holding her back a whole week. So she wouldn't come drill you with questions. Mm. Uh... Well, I met a girl a while ago and, uh, uh, no. The baby is, uh, I don't know where to start. Uh, no rush. Whenever you've got it figured out, as long as you know that, that if the Russians go crazy again, the girl... The baby, and you, are all invited to live in the bunker. Hmm. Anyway, boy, your turn. Are you gonna make a move or what? Robert, for coming right away. It's no problem. I got the first flight available. Anything you need, sweetie. Robert, this is Sheriff Nick Reyes from Cerro Lake. Pleasure. Please. So, why the urgency? Is this about Ed? Has he gotten worse? Uh, Robert, this might seem a little odd, but... Do you remember if Veronica had an unusual scar? What? I don't know. Why would you ask that, sweetie? Mr. Carrigan, we're asking about a very particular scar. On the right glute. He was barking too much. Honey, you, 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 you can't just barge into the Cerny's yard without permission. And you certainly cannot take Skippy. But he was hot. He's a puppy, honey. He doesn't know how to swim. And that pool is really deep. Dear God, if I hadn't been there... Miss Cerny said I was a bad girl. 
Oh, you're not a bad girl, honey. She was just upset and said some things she shouldn't have, that's all. But she won't let me play with Skippy anymore. She's a stupid old fart. Sweetie, they were only scared, that's all. They thought you wanted to hurt the puppy. But I... Just put yourself in their shoes for a moment. Imagine if someone took you to the park without your dad's permission when he wasn't around. And let's just say that, God forbid, you fell off the slide and hurt yourself. Wouldn't your daddy tell that person that they couldn't take you to the park anymore? You can't tell daddy. I don't want you to. I can't lie to your dad. Plus, we should always tell the truth. You're not my mother. You can't tell me what to do. Of course I'm not, honey. But sometimes it's wise to listen to your elders. Okay, here's the plan. I'll put the dirty towels in the wash while you think about what you'd like to eat. Then I'll fix it up for you in a jiffy. What do you say? And let's just say that, God forbid, you fell off the slide and hurt yourself. Wouldn't your daddy tell that person that they couldn't take you to the park anymore? Yes. A nice big cut would do, but it'd be hard to blame her for it. I could cut myself with a broken glass, but she'd have to be the one to break it. It wouldn't hurt me that bad, and how would I blame her? Gee, why do they always set everything up for the grown-ups? So, Veronica, what would you like to eat? I want a PBJ and a Juicy Red in my Fruity glass. Oh, a PBJ and a Juicy Red in the Fruity Glass. Everything tastes better in that Fruity Glass, doesn't it? <gasps> oh, oh, what a klutz. I'm sorry, honey. 
Uh, um, let me get the broom. Don't you move a finger until I clean this all up, okay? I'll get you another glass just like that one before you even know it. They sell them at the... Oh, look! That must be your daddy! Mary, what's up? How's my little girl? She's fine, thank God. But I need to talk to you about something a bit... well, a bit sensitive. Will it leave a scar? Did you know that most brave little girls have scars? Now you'll have one too. And you know what else? It'll be shaped like a V. V for Veronica? Yeah, V for Veronica. Daddy? Is Mary bad? No. No. It's just... Don't you worry about it, honey. We'll find a better babysitter. No one will ever scold you again without a good reason. I love you so much, Daddy. Where did you build it, Samuel? I still can't believe you built a bunker on the ranch. <laughs> Neither can I. There's so much to keep in mind. For example, it has to be close enough to the house so that you can get to it quick before the bomb goes off. But it can't be right underneath the house, because that's the first place they'll look. Knowing you, nothing in that bunker was left to chance. Eddie, honey, you sure love that swing. Come on, now you sit up straight, and I'll bring out some of my apple pie and your favorite juice. Juicy blue? Huh? Oh. Woman, you're spoiling that boy rotten with all that junk he sees on TV.
bunker entrance could be anywhere. Can't hurt to try. Nope. Doesn't sound hollow or metallic. Could be in that field, but without any kind of sign. It'd take me years. Maybe I can see it from up above? Say it. Okay, but then off to the shower with you, or your mom won't let you come over. When the ship sinks and the rats take flight, who is the only pirate to stay and fight? Captain Roberts, who knows no fright. One more time. When the ship sinks and the rats take flight, who is the only pirate to stay and fight? Captain Roberts, who knows no fright. One more time. No, no, no. Captain Roberts needs to head to the sink. So much swashbuckling <laughs> is making him stink. Where is it, Samuel? Huh. You miss them too, don't you, old pal? You look well. You've got fresh water, you're nice and clean. Who's taking care of you? Hmm?
Knowing you, nothing in that bunker was left to chance. You bet. I'll show you the blueprints one of these days so you can see for yourself. I think they must still be somewhere in the barn. Anyway, thanks for the chess piece, son. I'm gonna put it somewhere special. Woman, you're spoiling that boy rotten with all that junk he sees on TV. Ed, tomorrow you and I are going fishing. But I don't want to kill little fishies. <laughs> Did you hear the boy? He doesn't want to kill. Samuel, let him be. Here you go. Your juicy blue, honey. Someday, you'll be a real man and we'll go fishing together. Come on, finish up that junk. I want to see if you can at least beat me at chess. I think those blueprints are still somewhere in the barn. Anybody there? Sheriff? Give me a reason. Hey, come on. Chill. Ugh. Robert. She was two years old when I adopted her. I always thought. I'd be compensated somehow for not seeing her birth. And yet, I've seen her die twice. Mr. Garrigan, I beg you. You don't know what it's like to lose your daughter, Sheriff. Mr. Garrigan. I do know what it's like. In fact, I relived it not too long ago. Sorry. I... I can't, Julia. I just can't. This whole time, she was alive. Not a single call in eight years. It can't be her. 
Robert. No, no. Why would she call me? She hated me ever since I had her committed. How did she die? What was she doing all these years? Was she happy? Robert. Her mental health deteriorated, and I don't think she was happy. She spent all these years planning her revenge on Ed, and she had no qualms about removing anyone who got in her way. She wanted to drive him crazy, but her plan failed. As for how it all ended, we're still not sure why, but she fell off the Brody Canyon Bridge and... Due to the extreme height, and the fact that it took us a while to find her body, her face might... No. Perhaps the scar we mentioned might be more helpful when it comes to identifying her. That's really all we need. Adam, why? 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 fingers you write with, you better start explaining why! Why? Adam... Please... Why did you kill my uncle? Adam... Your uncle was my friend. I didn't kill him. Faye... Veronica did. Bullshit! Veronica... Faye... Who pulled the trigger doesn't really matter. You're an accomplice in his death. An accomplice? Adam! You always wanted to get rid of me, as a kid and as a grown-up. You took them away from me. You stole their love. Fishing, chess, the shared afternoons. You took them away from me! And you still weren't satisfied. You wanted the ranch! But I was going to inherit it, wasn't I? You wanted to threaten him to change his will, but never had the balls to because you've never had the balls to do anything. Your little friend did the dirty work for you, and it all got out of hand. She killed my uncle, and you killed her for screwing up, out of rage, to tie up any loose ends. Adam, that's insane. I'm done. Did you kill my uncle? Adam, I didn't. I don't care who pulled the trigger. Did you kill my uncle? I know where you're... Did you kill my uncle? No! I had nothing to do with his death. Nothing! You just won't give up, will you? All right. You better tell me what I want to know before I lose it! Three... Your aunt is alive, and I know where she is. What? She's in the ranch bunker. There's no bunker on the ranch. The blueprints are downstairs. I know where the entrance is. How do I know this isn't just a plan for me to let you go? This is not who you are, Adam Franklin. You're a good man, but if you do this... You asked for ah! it. There's a bunker. You prove it. 
According to the blueprints, it should be here. We should hear the sound of metal. <laughs> it's right here. There's no doubt about it. Is it her? Did you know that most brave little girls have scars? And now you'll have one too. And you know what else? It'll be shaped like a V. V for Veronica? Thank you, Mr. Kerrigan. <laughs> Adam, Adam, where were you? What? With the Miller? Please tell me you didn't. What tractor? Come again? Has to weigh a ton. How did you plan to? We got the key. I'm on my way. I need to go to the Franklin Ranch. Let's catch up later. Sheriff, can I stay a little longer with my daughter? Mr. Carrigan. Perhaps... Would you like to meet your granddaughter? Honey Esther? Can you hear me? Auntie, we're going to get you out of there. Honey, <laughs> Esther, are you okay? It's me, Honey. I'm Adam, your nephew. Stay away, monster! Honey, it's okay. Put the knife down. Stay away! 
way! Go get her. Esther, look at me. It's Eddie Miller. It's Eddie. You killed Samuel! When the ship sinks and the rats take flight, who's the only pirate to stay and fight, hmm? Stay away from her, you monster! When the ship sinks and the rats take flight, who's the only pirate to stay and fight? Captain Roberts, who knows not fright. <laughs> when the ship sinks and the rats take flight, who's the only pirate to stay and fight? Hmm? Captain Roberts, who knows not fright. Right! Eddie! Eddie! Give me your hand! <coughs> Esther! Oh. Give me your hand! Oh, my dear boy, what did I do to you? It'll heal fast, don't worry. The ambulance is on its way. They'll have to run some tests and... Uh... <gasps> we had all kinds of things. Food and water. You know, Sam. Um, Mrs. Franklin, if you could... You know, when you're feeling a little better. Maybe you could tell us what happened? I told Sam that it was too late to cross the woods. That he should take the car instead. But he insisted on walking to your house. He said he wanted to remind you about your fishing plans. But I know that he just wanted to have a beer with you. I was surprised when he came back so soon. He... he wasn't himself. I said, Sam, what's wrong? What did you see?
Let's do this tonight. Same time. You better not be late. <laughs> well played, Kitty. I told Sam to call the police right away, but you know how stubborn he was. He said he'd tell you the next day when you went fishing. He didn't think much about it. He said a lot of youngsters did target practice in the woods and that she was probably shooting at squirrels. We didn't sleep well that night. Got up earlier than usual. Just before dawn, while we were having breakfast, we heard a car. We thought that was odd. But that wasn't the case. Sam! Oh my god! Sam! She made me cover him with no! a blanket. And then oh. she dragged oh. me away from him. She locked me up with the baby in the bunker and said she'd be back in a few hours. Installed a phone down there. I tried to call the police, but I no longer knew what time it was, so I braced myself for her return. How am I going to live without him, madam? What will I do? Well, you could get ready for dinner. Otherwise, Jenny will be asleep when her grandma gets there. Oh, I forgot about Eddie's apple pie. I hope I didn't burn it. Jenny, sweetheart, tell your daddy to stop writing and come play with him. He's ignoring Grandpa. Huh? If you keep that up, you'll finish writing that novel in record time. Maybe. Does ten years sound record-breaking to you?
What's on your mind? This morning, I finally got a call from my acquaintance at the state adoption agency. It seems like the agency that Robert hired for Veronica's adoption hid relevant information about her biological family. What? They molested her. They broke her. They... I don't even want to think about it. Bastards. Does that explain everything? Why she was a psychopath? Many victims of abuse become abusers themselves. But sometimes, when they find a better family where they feel loved, that somehow compensates for the previous trauma. In Veronica's case, not even Robert's profound love could help her. The causes are multifaceted, personal, social, even biological. We'll never know. I suppose we are all broken in one way or another. We don't all become Veronica, but we're not saints either. I thought you didn't want to interfere with my job. Hey, who's been interfering with mine for the past week? <laughs> When are you leaving? This afternoon. When I'm done with all the paperwork, uh, if you're not busy, I know there's someone waiting for you in L.A. But Cerro Lake is beautiful this time of year, and, uh... There is someone, but I've given him far too many opportunities. And none to Cerro Lake. We could go back to Mama Louise. There are so many things I haven't tried yet. Well played, Kitty. Please, don't touch her! She's just a baby! Don't touch her! She's my damn daughter! Can you point where he touched you on the doll? We found you a new daddy. Do you understand what I'm saying? I love you too, sweetie. To the moon and back. You're not crazy, honey. You're not a bad girl, honey. Will we still be friends when I'm gone? She's your daughter, Ed. Shut up. <laughs> 